Welcome to Mystic Realms Recap. Links are in the description below. Please show some love of the author and me. On to the show. The higher-ups of the Brilliant Shrine knew that Lindley was very likely to be the son of the Holy Light, as predicted by His Holiness, Pope Rosario. On top of that, he had even given Pope Rosario an antidote for Viper's poison, and was the benefactor of the Brilliant Shrine. Hence, after hearing that Lindley wanted to see Pope Rosario, they immediately brought him to the Dawn Cathedral on the top of the Holy Mountain. Lin Lee and Pope Rosario chatted alone with each other for a night, and no one knew what they talked about. All everyone knew was that, when Lin Lee left, Pope Rosario personally sent him to the door of the Dawn Cathedral. After walking out of the Dawn Cathedral, Lin Lee didn't say much to everyone, and simply apologized before using his power of flight to fly towards the Darkness Shrine. When Lin Lee landed in the Obsidian Square in the Night Canyon, the believers of darkness who noticed him immediately stepped forth to surround him. However, before anyone asked anything, Sendros walked out of the shrine and invited Lin Li to enter while the believers of darkness watched in shock. After a night-long conversation, Sendros stood in the obsidian square and watched Lin Li leave the night canyon. He shook his head and remained silent, while the high priest glanced at him inquisitively. The unique structure of the Tower of Dusk, in the breezy plains had become a wonderful scenery of Duland. Building a magic tower in the shape of a torch was unprecedented and unheard of. In fact, even the mages of the Tower of Dusk did not know that the projection of the burning flame on the top of the tower was the eternal furnace, built by the legendary High Lord Osric, let alone the outsiders. Lin Li landed directly on the black front fortress of the eternal furnace, where the Lich Ufalusi, the vampire Norfolar, and the forty death knights were absorbing the transformed death aura. Ufalusi and Norfolar had both reached the peak of level 22, while the forty death knights were about level 18 or level 19. It seemed that the black front fortress that was built with the skeleton of the titan obviously had significant effects on the undead creatures. I've seen the two magical crystals that you got. Are you planning to get those two items this time? Conoris asked while standing in front of the gate of the black front fortress and scrutinizing the undead servants. Well, you should know about the matters going on in the Tower of Dusk lately. The Animus strength is unknown, so I can only improve my strength and abilities as much as possible first. While those two magical crystals may be low level, they should be enough for sustaining the ice and fire domain, said Lin Li as he turned around. Seems like you have gained a lot of benefits from your trip this time. You actually, Conor has finally sensed the changes within Lin Li. Although he had a deep understanding of Lin Li's incredibly overpowering abilities, he couldn't help but be a little dumbfounded at this time. He, you're going to be shocked to death when I tell you about it. I did gain some benefits, but I almost died. Lin Li walked out of the Black Front Fortress and talked to Conoris about everything that he had experienced. Damn it, the Flame Dragon Lothar. Even though that guy was defeated by the Tyrant Balak back then, the fact that he could escape means that his powers are incredible, said Conoris who was secretly rejoicing about the fact that he had left Lin Li's body a long time ago. Otherwise, he would have definitely been scared to death. Can you guess why the Immortal King doesn't allow the Dragon of Destruction to appear? Asked Lin Li, who suddenly recalled the issue that he had discussed with Nifa and Rog. In the past, he would immediately ask Conoris any questions that he had. Although Conoris was long-winded, he would always give Lin Li a satisfactory answer in the end. He wondered how much Conoris knew about the Immortal King. However, Conoris answered directly this time. He simply shook his head and said, how would I know? If I reached the Immortal King's level, I wouldn't be what I am now. Damn, I knew it. Soul Trader, that's just bullshit. Lin Li remained silent and immediately quickened his pace in leaving the Eternal Furnace to go to the Tower of Dusk. The President is back. The first mage who saw Lin Li rubbed his eyes in disbelief and even forgot to greet and salute him for a while. He only snapped back to reality and reacted when he heard Lin Li asking him to go look for Gavin. At the same time that this mage proceeded to look for Gavin, the news of Lin Li's return spread quickly too. There was a huge uproar in the Tower of Dusk all of a sudden. Lately, the businesses of the Tower of Dusk had been obstructed by unknown forces, making every mage of the Tower of Dusk feel rather dejected and depressed. It was not that they were afraid of the enemy, but rather that they wanted to find out who the enemy was because it was necessary to do so even if they wanted to go all out. Everyone knew that the ones who were wreaking havoc and exposed themselves were just small fries, and the real opponent was still hiding behind the scenes. What was the point of getting rid of the insignificant ones? On the contrary, it might even allow others to have a hold on the Tower of Dusk and criticize their credibility. However, the President was now back. When the Tower of Dusk was attacked by the Dark Blade in the past, Lin Li returned and used just one magic spell to defeat the two legendary powerhouses of the Dark Blade. Those forces that are hiding in the dark and getting up tricks should get ready to be doomed this time. The mages of the Tower of Dusk seemed to blindly trust 
and admire Lindley, they all felt that there was no issue that their young president could not solve. President, I'm sorry, this matter is the result of my negligence, Gavin immediately apologized with a guilty expression, and his head hung low after he saw Lindley. It is indeed negligence on your part, and your punishment is indispensable but it is not the time for you to be punished now. Go pick out 40 mages according to their strength now. I have something to attend to. We'll talk about your matters later. Lin Lee waved his hand and dismissed Gavin, although the stolen things were of little value to him, and he also knew that betrayal was inevitable for a force. Gavin was undeniably liable for it. There would be rewards for merits and penalties for those who commit mistakes. Although he had always been satisfied with Gavin's performance, Lin Lee couldn't ignore the matter this time. Soon, Gavin picked out 40 archmages, who were either level 18 or level 19, plus Alan who had entered the legendary realm. Linley didn't say much to everyone, and simply told them to follow him. He then led them out of the Tower of Dusk and headed towards the Dragon Mountains. As soon as they entered the mountains, the sky suddenly turned dark, and the massive humorous Wyrm appeared above them together with the Lichufalusi. A black ray of lightning landed beside Linley before taking shape. It was the vampire Norfolar. The mages of the Tower of Dusk already knew the two undead servants very well, hence, they were not shocked even though the latter's appearance was sudden. However, there were soon sounds of quick galloping, and the cavalry unit formed by forty Holy Death Knights emerged behind the team under the lead of a Paladin Retribution Knight. Although the Holy Death Knights lived on the top of the Tower of Dusk, no one had ever seen them before. The mages and the team became rather nervous. However, after the Holy Death Knights caught up with the team, they immediately slowed down without revealing any intention to attack. Hence, the mages felt secretly relieved. At the same time, they also understood that the terrifying Holy Death Knights were the young President Lin Lis subordinates. However, it was not over yet. An alchemy aircraft landed in front of the team. Khan Oris got out of it, after which he used an alchemy array to retrieve the aircraft, and then walked towards Lin Li. Don't you know how to fly? Why did you bother bringing this aircraft? I thought that coward Angelana was also coming, said Lin Li as he rolled his eyes at Khan Oris with extreme contempt. Previously, Lin Li also wanted to get Angelano to come along. After all, the strength of the Titan-level Alchemy Colossus was already near the Sanctuary Realm, and it should be useful against the Retribution Knight Rodhart. However, Angelano wasn't his servant, after all. Upon hearing that they were going to fight a terrible enemy, he immediately shook his head profusely without saying anything else. I got that cowardly goblin to make this. Don't you think that this thing can fetch a good price? Conor is said excitedly while walking and telling Lin Li merrily about the new business opportunity that he had found. Let's wait until we overcome this obstacle, Lin Li said without hesitation like a wet blanket. Although Lin Li was rather calm about the matter, it did not mean that he didn't care about it. In fact, he was well aware that the trouble encountered by the Tower of Dusk, this time was definitely more serious than the previous ones. Since the Blood Moon Clan could survive for so long as the remaining forces of the High Elves and become one of the largest underground forces in the Breezy Plains, they were definitely terrifying. The Mithril Alliance had come from the Dark Age, which was dominated by the High Elves, and they even fought the Blood Moon Clan later on. Had they not had any powerful means, they would probably have been destroyed long ago. Apart from those two forces, Linley had also thought of a few other top forces, which had probably all played a certain role in this matter. The top forces were deeply rooted in the Breezy Plains, and had already been running businesses for over 1,000 years. Perhaps they might not be well known, but they definitely had extraordinary strength. The Tower of Dusk could be considered to be facing the entire Breezy Plains, and not just a single force. After overcoming this obstacle, everything would be settled easily. From then on, the Tower of Dusk would become the top force in the Breezy Plains. That was precisely the reason Linley had no choice but to lead his subordinates to the underground palace, despite having yet to figure out the details about Rod Hart and come up with a stable and appropriate solution. He had to obtain polar snow, and raging flames at all costs, even if it meant destroying the ice and fire domain. He would only have the confidence to lead the Tower of Dusk through the obstacle if he owned all seven pieces of the debris of the stars. The fort in the Dragon Mountains, which used to be the lair of the Seer Bandits, had already been destroyed beyond recognition. Lin Li led the team through the collapsed walls and the ruins. Soon, they arrived at the mountain cave behind the odd-shaped rocks. Lin Li paused for a while in front of the unassuming cave, feeling a little nervous. After all, he was about to face the retribution knight Rod Hart, who had made the entire breezy plane shudder. Passing through the dark cave, Lin Li finally saw the majestic underground palace again. The mages of the team finally realized that Lin Li had brought them there to hunt for treasures. All of a sudden, they were all a little dumbfounded. Most of them were born and raised in the breezy plains, but they had never heard of the Dragon Mountains. After walking through the long corridor, 
the team arrived at the gate of a palace. Lin Li slowly pushed the gate of the palace open, only to see that the magic lamps, which had gone out when he left once again lit up when he entered. At the instant that the gate was opened, a suffocating aura seemed to have surged out like a flood. This time, Lin Li was much stronger than he used to be. When he faced the terrifying aura, he didn't feel the slightest discomfort at all. However, the mages behind him could not help but gasp in shock while trying to restrain themselves. After all, when Lin Li visited previously, he had already entered the legendary realm. Unlike Lin Li, the mages of the Tower of Dusk, except Alan, were all just archmages. Lin Li stepped into the quiet palace, where the sounds of his footsteps seemed to be extremely abrupt and outstanding. Khan Oris and the undead servants followed him slowly. Although the mages had all sensed how terrifying the palace was, they still followed Lin Li and without hesitation. Finally, the figure with a sharp sword, in his hand sitting on the throne that was pieced together with the skeleton of the humorous Wyrm, gradually appeared in front of everyone. He had long, silvery hair, and was wearing a dark golden armor, on which there were exquisite maggots. The joints of the armor were decorated with the menacing bones of a single horned monster. The red of the cloak behind him resembled the color of coagulated blood. Have you thought of how to deal with him? Conoris asked softly. Although he had obtained Conoris' perfect body, the perfect body had been created for Osric himself. After Conoris occupied it, the speed of fusion was very slow, and he still couldn't exert the power of the sanctuary realm. Hence, Conoris was rather jealous of the Retribution Knight Rodhart's sanctuary realm abilities. I don't know, but I'll resort to all means. I refuse to believe that I can't deal with him, Linley said while taking action. He did not immediately go to the secret chamber to collect polar snow and raging flames. Instead, he was continuously taking out various precious magic materials from the Ring of Endless Storm. The first thing Lin Li did was to put up the Requiem Array that had once transformed the Titan Spirit. The Alchemy Array could turn mana into divine power and was said to be able to purify all evil forces in the world. Of course, it was just a saying. Although Lin Li had used the Requiem Array to transform the level 25 Titan Spirit back then, he dared not hope for it to be absolutely effective against Rodhart. After all, the terrifying Retribution Knight was once the most powerful Guardian Knight of the Brilliant Shrine. Hence, who would know if he was immune to divine power? It was said that the Prophet Willen had used the Requiem to purify him back then, yet, he was still alive and well. While surrounding Rodhart, Linley soon completed the Requiem Array using the baby elemental Wyrm, Xiao Hua, which had infinite mana as the mana source. At this time, Xiao Hua already possessed legendary power and definitely couldn't be compared to when it was just born. It probably would be able to maximize the power of the Requiem Array. After putting up the Requiem Array, Linley did not pause for a single moment and instead continued to place magic traps in his surroundings, such as the Blaze Trap, the Divine Cage, and the Brilliance Judgment Array. When arranging the magic traps, Linley did not hesitate at all and decided to use all sorts of rare magical materials without even frowning. All he wanted was to exert the power of the magic traps as much as possible. If it had been in the past, Linley would not have been so careful. After all, he had been unsure how terrifying the sanctuary powerhouse was. However, during the recent period of time, he had seen the incredible abilities of the sanctuary powerhouses, which were absolutely unimaginable. If he didn't go all out, he would really die a wrong death. Up to it DF or M no. B, L, B, I, N, C, O, M. After setting the magic traps around Rodhart, Linley retreated far, far away, and carefully scrutinized his arrangements. Finally, he made up his mind and resolutely took out four magical crystal cannons from the Ring of Endless Storm and pointed the muzzles at Rodhart. He then began to instruct his subordinates to stay in their positions in the palace and carefully explained what they would have to do after the changes. At this juncture, the mages finally knew that the enemy they were about to face this time was the Retribution Knight, who had almost destroyed the Breezy Plains. They were definitely terrified. After all, they had yet to reach even the legendary realm. However, after seeing the arrangements that Linley had made and hearing his detailed instructions, they felt a little less afraid. Besides, they could also tell that Linley didn't bring them there as cannon fodder. Hence, they were rather attentive when listening to the instructions and made it a point to keep them in mind. After making all the preparations, Linley didn't know what else there was for him to do. Hence, he finally took his two undead servants and Conoris to the secret chamber according to his memory after passing by the throne that was made of the skeleton of a Wyrm. After breaking through the wall in the secret chamber, the world where water and fire fused appeared in front of Linley again. The blazing flames and freezing snow were completely different elements, and yet they were put together perfectly to form a peculiar world. The two streams of light in the sky were continuously chasing each other like two mischievous children. Lin Li took a deep breath 
and then chanted the mysterious and profound ancient demonic runes, after which magic symbols that exuded a magical glow appeared in front of him and began bouncing together with his chanting. Gradually, the world of ice and fire seemed to have been engulfed as the ice, and flames gradually dimmed in a shadow which grew increasingly thick as if it were about to devour everything. Under Linless command, the throne of darkness descended on the world of ice and fire, and used its overwhelming power to conceal that of the ice and flames. Sensing the power of ice and fire, Linley couldn't help but secretly rejoice. If this had happened before he experienced the events in the Big Rift, he probably wouldn't have been able to devour all the power of the ice and fire nature magical domain like Conoris mentioned, even if he had summoned the Throne of Darkness. The Throne of Darkness was initially the magical domain that the Dragon of Destruction had created for his own projected avatar. Although Lin Li had learned the incantation for possessing the Throne of Darkness from Conoris, the laws that constituted the Throne of Darkness had been created by the Dragon of Destruction, after all. Unless Lin Li reached the level of the Dragon of Destruction, he would not be able to completely control the Throne of Darkness. At the end of the battle with the Flame Dragon Lothar in the Big Rift, Lin Li summoned the Throne of Darkness and managed to suppress the Flame Dragon Lothar by channeling the Abyssal Force of the Throne of Darkness. The resistance of the Flame Dragon Lothar disrupted the laws that constituted the Throne of Darkness, which turned out to be an unexpected gain for Lin Li. Although the laws of the Throne of Darkness were broken, the throne would not collapse. Lin Li could use his mastery of the Dark Force to restore the broken laws of the Throne of Darkness. One benefit would be that he could have a deeper understanding of the laws that constituted the Throne of Darkness, while another would be that he could infuse his own spiritual brand into it. Due to the fact that Lin Li had added his spiritual brand to the laws of darkness that constituted the Throne of Darkness, it could be considered his own magical domain, just like the light and darkness domain that he had created. When using the Throne of Darkness, he could also infuse his mental strength and allow it to fully penetrate into the throne so that he could achieve complete control of every morsel of power. Finally, the world of conflicting elements of fire and ice was completely devoured by the throne of darkness and became a dark abyss-like world, which did not allow a single ray of light to enter. Lin Li was the only one who could sense that the world of fire and ice still existed. The streams of light from polar snow and raging flames were still moving in the sky as if nothing was affected at all. At the very last moment, Linley took another deep breath, stabilized his emotions, and took out the magical crystals of the ice and fire twin dragons, which he had gotten from a trade with Prince Arthur. As he chanted a new stanza of the incantation, two magical crystals flew out of Linley's hands and darted towards the world of endless darkness. The magical crystals of the ice and fire twin dragons gave out magical waves and mana that were exactly the same as before. Just as Linley expected, there were no mana fluctuations at all after the two magical crystals were placed in the world of ice and fire. They gave out the same mana, which spread throughout the entire world at the same speed, replacing the power of polar snow and raging flames while maintaining the existence of the two elements. No one could see what happened in the world of darkness, and all they could see was Linley reaching his hand out slowly and sticking it into the world of darkness. He then pulled out two pulsating beams of light after a while. Done deal, Linley said while looking at the polar snow and raging flames that were in his hands, feeling a sense of relief. He sent the throne of darkness that contained the fire and ice magical domain back into the Spastime Rift. Once he returned to the Tower of Dusk, he would be able to use the throne of darkness and the ice and fire domain on the Eternal Furnace. Although it wouldn't be as overpowering as the conquering Mageth in the Sky Castle, it would definitely enhance the powers of the people in the Eternal Furnace. However, at this moment, a deafening roar sounded from above, and the underground palace began to quake as if it was about to collapse at any moment. Lin Li had just felt a sense of relief, and yet he tensed up again. Clearly, the evil and heinous Rodhart had awakened nonetheless. In the palace above the secret chamber, Rodhart was seated high on the throne made of the skeleton of a worm, but now the soul fire in his eyes abruptly started to burn at the instant that polar snow and raging flames were taken away. Death aura erupted from his body like black flames, emitting mana waves that had also surged at the same time. They were rolling towards the surroundings like a flood. The Wyrm skeleton throne that Rod Hart was seated on instantly collapsed like it was made of fine sand, and turned into ashes that emitted waves of mana, which spread towards the entire palace. Sensing the terrifying magical waves, the mages in the palace couldn't help, but instantly turned pale. A thought emerged in their hearts uncontrollably, that power was definitely not something that humans could rival. The magical waves alone were already suffocating to them, and it was as if their souls were going to be crushed by the unrivaled power. The Death Knights, who manipulated the divine power, could also sense the aura of the Retribution Knight that was coming from Rodhart's emerging mana. They could not help 
but get worked up. For the Death Knights, the Retribution Knight was undoubtedly their leader, but they could detect the aura of three Retribution Knights now, which made it impossible for them to react reasonably all of a sudden. However, at the same time that Rod Hart awakened, the Requiem Array detected his undead aura, and instantly lit up. The magic circuits and mana nodes began to shine with a brilliant glow. Melodious music echoed in the palace as if it could wash away all the filth in the world. The tension and anxiety within the hearts of the mages were gradually placated by the soul-cleansing music. Amidst the light that was full of divine power in the melodious music that could purify everything, Rodhart, who had just awakened from a deep sleep, began to have his death aura that resembled black flames, drawn out of his body by a powerful force. It floated in the air and was purified by the holy light, which made it vanish. President's magic arrays are indeed effective. Upon sight of such a scene, the mages finally felt a little relieved, but they were all still trembling involuntarily, while holding their staffs tightly. They stared at the center of the magic array while praying secretly in their hearts, and hoping that the powerful array could completely purify the daunting retribution night. However, they were not believers of the holy light, after all, and their prayers were destined to go unheard by gods. Rodhart, who was in the center of the Requiem Array, was obviously angered by the damned divine power. After letting out a deafening roar, he pulled out the eternal frost blade that he had stuck in the head of the Wyrm, together with the deafening roar that made their souls shudder. The white light that was full of divine power and shrouded Rodhart's body instantly became filthy and murky. A large amount of death aura condensed in the light and gathered on Rodhart's body again causing the black flames to burn even more intensely. The melodious song suddenly became intermittent and particularly ear-piercing at this moment, and everything seemed to have been turned upside down. The magic circuit of the Requiem Array was eroded by the death aura without any resistance. The black flames were ignited one after another, and the magic nodes seemed to have made cackling sounds as well while turning the pieces of precious magical materials into worthless waste. Finally, Xiao Hua, the baby elemental Wyrm, had also left the Requiem Array like it was trying to flee. The entire array seemed to have suddenly collapsed. Boom, Rodhart took a step out, only to step into Lin Lis Blaze Trap, causing the entire palace to seem like it had fallen into the sun as the dazzling light instantly engulfed his tall body. However, the footsteps in the light were not interrupted. Rodhart walked out of the dazzling light, while the death aura that resembled black flames became thicker and more intense. When juxtaposed against the light, the divine cage was activated, and the white beams of light were interlaced around Rodhart, forming a huge cage in the blink of an eye. The divine cage initially only required four holy light gems, which were each just as valuable as legendary magical crystals, but Linley decided to use 16 palm sized ones. The power of the divine cage was maximized. Linley thought that he would be able to at least buy some time for himself, even if he couldn't imprison Rodhart immediately. However, in the face of the divine cage, which Linley had invested greatly in, Rodhart simply raised his arm and caused the black flames on his body to surge out in the direction of his arm. The extremely solid white beam of light lasted only for a few seconds before it became stained by the black flames and collapsed. The sixteen precious holy light gems shattered and turned into worthless waste one by one. There was light condensing at the muzzles of the four magical crystal cannons, which were then aimed at Rodhart. The beams were interlaced and shot from all directions towards Rodhart. However, Rodhart didn't dodge at all. He simply waved the eternal frost blade gently, causing the four cannons to disappear without a trace. The four magical crystal cannons only managed to fire one round of magical crystals. They all shattered abruptly. It had only been a brief moment since Rodhart awakened and yet Lin Lis arrangements were mostly ruined already. At this moment, the Forty Holy Death Knights also understood who their leader was just by judging the three Retribution Knights. They then raised their lances together under the command of the Retribution Knights. Forty beams of light containing divine power condensed in the void, and blasted towards Rodhart at the same time. Although the Forty Holy Death Knights all had level 19 power, except for a Retribution Knight, the power of the Forty condensed beams of light was still absolutely astonishing. Besides, the divine power could restrain undead creatures, and the combined blow really made Rodhart slow down. Xiao Hua, the baby elemental Wyrm, was still a legendary elemental Wyrm with infinite mana. Even though it did not manage to persist in the Requiem Array, its instantaneous legendary magic formed a massive magic storm, which surged towards Rodhart like a flood. Upon sight of the attacks from the Holy Death Knights and the baby elemental Wyrm, the forty mages recovered from horror and raised their staffs together according to Lin Lis instructions. At their level, even the most powerful magic they had mastered would not cause any harm to Rodhart, who had already reached the sanctuary realm. However, Lin Li had set up a huge magic array in the palace for them, 
the descent of the holy light. The magic they cast did not dart towards Rodhard immediately, and instead gathered together under the effects of the magic array, before being converted into the power of light and forming a solid beam of holy light, which blasted towards Rodhart. The power of that holy light was much stronger than the holy light emitted by the holy death knights. In fact, it was not inferior to the true legendary level holy light thurgy. All of a sudden, there were continuous roars in the palace, and the aftermath of the explosion of magic was already beyond the limit of the defensive spells of the palace. Cracks appeared on the top of the palace and rubble fell like raindrops. The beautiful stone pillars of the palace were also covered in cobweb-like cracks, and looked as if they might crumble into pieces any moment. However, just a few seconds after the endless magic spells overwhelmed Rodhart, this tall figure with long silver hair seemed to have walked out without any hindrance. Apart from the slight damage to his red cloak, there were no signs of suffering from magic attacks on his body. However, divine power had some inherent restraining effects on undead creatures, after all. The black flame on Rod Hart's body seemed to have become weaker than at first, though that was all. Seeing that all the arrangements made by their president did not have any effect on Rod Hart at all, the mage's heart sank all of a sudden. Although none of them stopped casting spells, they also knew that all their efforts were futile. Rod Hart's strength and abilities were obviously beyond what they could rival as mortals. When he heard that loud roar, Linley knew that Rod Hart had already awakened, and immediately rushed out of the secret chamber with his subordinates. When Lin Lee and the rest had just rushed out of the passage leading to the secret chamber, they realized that Rod Hart had already destroyed all of Lin Lee's arrangements, and rushed towards them aggressively from the palace with the eternal frost blade in his hands. Lin Lee got a great shock, but fortunately, he knew through his interaction with the Death Knights that the mages did not suffer too much. However, that also proved that Rod Hart was indeed staying there because of the ice and fire magical domain, as well as polar snow and raging flames. These were ruined in the blink of an eye. Is this how useful your means are? Conoris questioned Lin Lee in a depressed and dejected manner. Given the current degree of fusion between him and the perfect body, he could at most exert level 24 strength, which was worlds apart from Rod Hart, who was in the sanctuary realm. Hence, he wasn't optimistic about Lin Lee confronting Rod Hart head on. Upon sight of the four of them, Rod Hart immediately knew that the items had been taken away by them. Without pausing, he raised his arm and swung his sword at Lin Lee, after which an arc that spanned several meters was formed in the sky. As soon as it took shape, it seemed to leap towards Lin Lee. It was said that the eternal frost blade could freeze space and slice it open like it was an actual object, and then infuse force into it to allow it to instantly appear in front of the attacking target. That power seemed to be somewhat similar to the space power of the debris of the stars, nothingness. However, in comparison, the eternal frost blade was obviously much worse. However, the power of the weapon would depend on the user. Although the eternal frost blade was not comparable to the debris of the star's nothingness, the power that Rod Hart could exert while using it was definitely stronger than the power of nothingness in Linless hands. The sword suddenly flashed in front of them, and the space around the light seemed to have collapsed, giving Lin Lee no time to react or move his body at all. Just as he was about to be cut in half by the light reflected by the blade, a layer of light suddenly appeared on his body, and the light was instantly deflected in other directions. Greatly astonished, Lin Lee broke out in a cold sweat and secretly rejoiced while activating the magical domain instantly. He felt thankful for the fact that he had fortunately replaced the star-scarred robe on his body with the domain robe. If it weren't for the space laws on the domain robe, he would have really been split in two. However, the domain robe was not omnipotent. If the space power had not been used in the eternal frost blade, the space laws of the domain robe would not have automatically taken effect. Moreover, the automatic activation was just the simplest application of the space laws. Had Rod Hart launched another shot with the sword, Lin Lee would have inevitably ended up being cut apart. Lin Lee, who was drenched in cold sweat, dared not hesitate at all. At the moment that he exhibited the light and darkness domain, he pointed the Helios scepter towards Rod Hart. A light and darkness sword appeared in the air in the magical domain, and there was an outburst of infinite power, which tried to behead Rod Hart. With Lin Lee's current strength and mastery of the power of light and darkness, his light and darkness sword no longer required such a long condensing time, and it had also become much more powerful than before. At first glance, the light and darkness of the light and darkness sword seemed to be distinct, but if one were to take another glance, they would realize that the powers of light and darkness seemed to be merging and changing together. It was the sanctuary realm power that Lin Lee had gained an understanding of. Faced with a sanctuary powerhouse like Rod Hart, Lin Lee knew very well that the role of legendary magic was quite limited, and the so-called angels of light and dark were merely useless tricks. Hence, he decided to launch his strongest attack, although the light and darkness sword that contained a trace of sanctuary realm power was still legendary level, 
it was strong enough to cause certain damage to sanctuary powerhouses. Rod Hard had clearly detected the sanctuary level power in the light and darkness sword, and thus he wasn't as casual dealing with the attack as before. The eternal frost blade in his hand suddenly emitted a burst of dazzling light which seemed to have suddenly made the eternal frost blade size increase 100 times. It was not inferior to that of the light and darkness sword. Boom! The two swords collided with a loud explosive sound that made the entire palace quake violently. Linless light and darkness sword had already collapsed, but Rodhart's giant sword that was made of light was still charging towards Linley without any pauses. Conoris chanted an ancient demonic rune set while condensing solid balls of lightning in his hands which he then shot at Rodhart like they were cannonballs. In less than a second, there were already hundreds of purple-colored balls of lightning that shrouded Rodhart's body while giving off the aura of destruction. Follow the latest novels in Velvin, calm. However, the power of Rodhart's sword remained unchanged, while the black flames formed by the death aura suddenly burst out and surrounded his body quickly. The hundreds of purple balls of lightning instantly disappeared, and they flew towards the vampire Norfolar who had suddenly appeared at the same time. Norfolk spat some blood and flew out. While the Lich Ufalusi finished chanting his spell, he raised his skeleton staff high in his hand, and an intertwining cloud of green mist moved towards Rodhart. Although he didn't know how to use divine power, he was a necromancer, and naturally could deal with undead creatures using necromagic. The green mist was the curse of decay, which would make the body of an undead creature decompose quickly. However, the green mist disappeared without a trace at the instant that it came into contact with the death aura, vanishing just like ignited gunpowder. At this moment, Rodhart's sword was right in front of Linley. Linley tried his best to stimulate the space laws of the domain robe, and small spatial cracks appeared in front of him before disappearing and then appearing again. However, a portion of power in the sword would be taken away with the disappearance of every spatial crack. Still, Rodhart's sword was extremely powerful and could not be diminished by those cracks. In an instant, the massive sword had already appeared in front of Linley, who began to twitch and shudder, feeling as if the sword had turned him into pieces. However, Linley's figure appeared again not too far away, still intact. Nonetheless, Linley looked a little pale at this moment. Although he managed to fuse some space laws into his light and darkness domain with the help of the domain robe, creating a large distortion of the space to change his position was still a little beyond his limits. As the figure flickered, a reincarnation crossbow appeared in Linley's hand, which was coupled with a sharp arrow that contained lightning. Thunderbolt was the strongest one out of the seven pieces of the debris of the stars, and just as the space in the domain had stabilized, Linley locked the trigger reincarnation crossbow with his fingers and a flash of lightning seemed to connect the crossbow to Rodhart. However, at the moment that Thunderbolt was about to be shot, Rodhart swung the Eternal Frost Blade a millimeter away from the Thunderbolt, and created a space rift in front of Thunderbolt. All of a sudden, the light from Thunderbolt shifted slightly and brushed past Rodhart. Roar! With a loud roar, Rodhart placed the Eternal Frost Blade vertically in front of him, and a terrifying wave of magic instantly filled the entire palace with his body as the central point. At the same time, the black flames on his body also became even more intense as it expanded and formed a somewhat illusory black gate behind him. Damn it, he wants to summon the Death Knights. Hurry, Conoris yelled in horror. Linley smiled bitterly while thinking to himself, hurry up and do what? Stop him. Our opponent is a sanctuary powerhouse. What can I do to stop him? Besides, his summoning speed is obviously much faster than ours when we use summoning spells. For him, it's so effortless and as easy as opening an ordinary door. I've just retracted the debris of the star's thunderbolt, and yet his terrifying black door has already taken shape. Lin Li and the others didn't have time to react at all, and the next thing they knew, they saw a peak legendary level nightmare beast appearing in the black gate formed by the black flames. The nightmare beast was already charging out while leading death knights, who were neatly lined up. The nightmare beast, which was at the peak of the legendary level, was undoubtedly Rodhart's former mount. Rodhart, the Retribution Knight, was probably the only one who was powerful enough to ride and control it. Although the Death Knights under the Retribution Knight could never reach the legendary realm, they could definitely exert combat power that was above the legendary level under the help of various magic supplemented by the Retribution Knight. Back then, the group of Death Knights almost destroyed the entire Breezy Plains under the command of Rodhart. Plenty of legendary powerhouses were defeated by the Death Knights. Flick, don't tell me this is all you can come up with. What other tricks do you have? Display them now. Hurry up. Otherwise, it will be too late. Seeing that Rodhart had summoned the daunting Death Knights, Conoris couldn't help but panic and secretly regret his decision to join in. He was asking for it. Rodhart managed to make things extremely difficult for everyone, 
even though he was severely injured by the prophet Willen, he was undoubtedly a sanctuary powerhouse, after all, as long as he was still in the sanctuary realm, he would always be unrivaled, and his power would not be easily challenged by mortals. Since the Death Knights already appeared, could there be anything more devastating for them? You are an ancient deity, who once mastered the art of conspiracy and deception. Don't you have any solutions for such situations? retorted Linley, who was getting a little flustered too. He'd initially thought that he would just be dealing with Rod Hart alone. Who would have thought that Rod Hart would summon the Death Knights too? Under the command of Rod Hart, the Death Knights were exuding combat power that was probably not inferior to a sanctuary powerhouse. I'm definitely the unluckiest person in Anril. What else can I do? How did that bastard Willen even handle things? Not only did he not purify Rod Hart, he even allowed the Death Knights to stay. I really wonder if there is a hidden relationship between them, Conoris yelled in exasperation. Upon hearing Conoris' complaint, Lin Lee could only smile wryly to himself. Perhaps no one would believe that the Prophet Willen and the so-called Son of the Holy Light of the Brilliant Shrine was really the twin brother of the fallen Rod Hart who had brought great shame to the Brilliant Shrine. In the end, the Brilliant Shrine was just a religion, and not a spokesperson for justice. The prophet Willen was also a human with feelings. How could he really kill his relative for some unrelated people? However, Linley couldn't tell Conoris about that matter. After all, it was something that the Brilliant Shrine had been trying to cover up. There was no need for him to spread it around. Besides, so what if he were to spread it? It wouldn't be of any help to the situation at this juncture at all. It wouldn't make Rod Hart commit suicide out of shame anyway. Looking at the Death Knights swarming out of the Black Gate, Linley knew that the battle would definitely require him to go all out. Taking advantage of the time that Rod Hart spent summoning the Death Knights, Linley took out the summoning lamp and released the Lord of Nightmares and the Crimson Dragon. At the same time, he got the Holy Death Knights, who had stopped Rod Hart in the palace to rush over through the connection of the Soul Brand. Linley then raised the Helios Scepter in his hand and instantly condensed a light and darkness sword. However, he did not attack Rod Hart and instead swung it at the exquisitely carved giant pillars in the palace. Although Osric had put up defensive Magaths in the palace, Linley had already reached the peak of the legendary level at this time, and he had even gotten some enlightenment about the mysteries of the power of the sanctuary realm. The power of the light and darkness sword could no longer be stopped by just a simple defensive Magath. With a loud noise, a huge pillar broke and the roof of the palace fell in large pieces. What are you doing? Conor is questioned feeling a little confused by Lin Li's approach. I'm demolishing the house. Otherwise, how can we deal with the Death Knights? Lin Li answered, but he didn't stop at all. Instead, he slashed another giant pillar with his light and darkness sword. Although narrow space would often be more advantageous to the disadvantaged party in some cases, Lin Li was now facing not just a group of Death Knights, but also a sanctuary-level retribution knight. Fighting against such an enemy would obviously be unrealistic. Without enough room for maneuvering, it would definitely be a dead end for him if he were to get besieged. Although increased room would be more conducive for the Death Knights to move away from each other, Linley mainly wanted them to disperse. Otherwise, they would have to face the impact of the concentrated power. After hearing Lin Lis' explanation, Conoris also figured it out, and so punched a pillar next to him. As the pillars collapsed, the entire underground palace began to sway continuously. Large cobweb-like cracks formed on the huge pillars that were covered in exquisite carvings, and the pillars then collapsed. The magnificent and luxurious palace that had its pillars collapsed amidst the tremors was ruined in the blink of an eye. Everyone who was initially in the palace was directly exposed in a more spacious underground cave. At this moment, the black gate behind Rod Hart had already closed and disappeared in the blink of an eye. On the other hand, there were hundreds of death knights in the palace, each holding a lance and wearing a black full-body armor. They were riding the hideous nightmare beasts that were shrouded in death aura that seemed like black flames. The death knights had all taken more than just thousands of souls. During the massacre in the breezy plains in the past, the black flames were full of twisted faces that were wailing with agony. Legend had it that when Rod Hart was conducting the massacre in the breezy plains back then, there were nearly 1,000 death knights under him, but it was unknown if Rod Hart kept all of them or most of them were purified by Willen. Of course, even though there were only hundreds of death knights, they were still hard for Lin Li to deal with. Even though Lin Li also had an army of death knights, whom he had transformed into death knights that could manipulate divine power, the old saying applied, a lousy teammate would drag the whole team down. Rod Hart was a sanctuary-level retribution knight, while Lin Li was only at the peak of the legendary level and only had a slight understanding of the power of the sanctuary realm. He had yet to even reach the borderline. Besides, Linley was not a real retribution knight. Even though he had subdued a group of death knights, 
He didn't know the type of magic the Retribution Knights were born with that would allow them to control their subordinate Death Knights. A comparison between them would show how obvious the gap in combat power was. Rod Hart, who had summoned the Death Knights, did not stop to wait for the Death Knights to surround and besiege his enemies. Instead, he waited for the summoning gate to close and vanish, after which he continuously waved the Eternal Frost Blade in his hand to launch fierce attacks against Lin Li. At the same time, the Death Knights had also split up into several teams and besieged Lin Li and the rest. Although Lin Li's teammates were all powerhouses at the legendary level, they could barely endure the siege of the Death Knights. Be it in terms of attack or defense, the Death Knights were perfectly in sync and could cooperate better than any well-trained team that Lin Li had seen. Perhaps it was not just a tacit understanding that they shared, but a body. They seemed to be a complete whole that did not have a single flaw that others could exploit. At this moment, the team that had initially blocked Rod Hart had also arrived at the ruined palace under the lead of the baby elemental Wyrm, Xiao Hua. Although Xiao Hua was usually a little bit mischievous, there was a trace of anxiety in its eyes when it saw Lin Li being in a dangerous situation under Rod Hart's attack. It ignored the team and simply flat its cicada-like wings, screaming and flying towards Lin Li. At the same time, countless powerful magic spells were instantly emitted, forming a huge magic storm that seemed to be able to destroy the world. It launched the magic storm at the target in front in a bid to clear all obstacles ahead. However, the magic storm that seemed enough to destroy everything encountered an insurmountable barrier. After a violent explosion and loud roars, a nightmare beast that had a menacing face and was covered in black flames suddenly emerged from a pile of magic dust. The nightmare beast was Rod Hart's mount. Back then, it tagged along when Rod Hart fought with plenty of powerhouses. Hence, the Nightmare Beast's powers were incredible. Perhaps it could be considered a Nightmare Beast King. Seeing that it had been blocked, the young elemental Wyrm Xiao Hua clenched its tiny fists and roared, allowing its pure menace of the dragon to surge out like an invisible wave. If it were an ordinary Nightmare Beast of peak legendary power, it would probably have to run far, far away in the face of the menace of the dragon of an elemental Wyrm, which was much more powerful than other creatures. However, the owner of the Nightmare Beast was the Sanctuary-level Retribution Knight, Rod Hart. The Retribution Knight was given that name precisely because his existence was a challenge to the world laws, thus allowing him to be prideful and arrogant enough to despise all authorities. Although the menace of the Dragon of the Young Elemental Wyrm was close to the level of the Dragon aspect, it only managed to anger the King of Nightmare Beasts. With an angry roar, the aura of the Nightmare Beast plummeted as if it was about to break through to the Sanctuary Realm at this moment. The rolling black flames were giving off a terrifying death aura, which instantly condensed countless dark magic spells that swept towards the petite young elemental Wyrm. One of them was the descendant of the Dragon of Dream, which was a dragon aspect, while the other was the King of Nightmare Beasts and was only one step away from the Sanctuary Realm. The two powerful beings of Anril engaged in a terrifying battle on the ruined battlefield. On the ground, the team that arrived together with the young elemental Wyrm Xiao Hua had also stopped in front of that insurmountable barrier. The team composed of 40 holy death knights and 40 archmages was a power that absolutely no one in the breezy plains would dare to despise. However, they were stopped in their tracks by 50 odd death knights. Be it in terms of cooperation or individual strength, the holy death knights were completely incomparable to Rod Hart's death knights. If it hadn't been possible for them to manipulate divine power, more than half of them, would have probably been killed during the first confrontation. As for the mages of the Tower of Dusk, the tacit understanding they shared, which they had always been proud of, was simply incomparable to that of the Death Knights. Fortunately, there were holy Death Knights that were defending them. Otherwise, they would have been slaughtered. No one knew how terrifying the Death Knights that had once bulldozed through and carried out a massacre in the Breezy Plains were. However, the hundreds of Death Knights who had fallen asleep for hundreds of years actually brought about a huge crisis to everyone on Lin Li's side. The vampire Norfolar was Lin Li's first servant, and back in the green dragon lair in the Ga Mountain range, he managed to enter the legendary realm through consuming the blood of a green dragon. Although green dragons were relatively low level amongst Wyrms, their blood still contained extraordinary power, which allowed Norfolar to have a huge advantage than other vampires of the same level. After stepping into the legendary realm, vampires had always been known for their speed and were known as natural assassins. Other vampires of the same level could not compare to Norfolar in speed at all. When he maximized his speed, he would be like a pulsating ray of black lightning, which was difficult to catch. However, assassins would usually try to move in stealth mode and stay as hidden as possible while waiting for an opportunity to escape immediately after an attack. Being as fast as lightning was definitely important for assassins, but the selected combat method was 
what would affect their strength the most. Allowing an assassin to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against the enemy was clearly not a method that would suit them. Norfolk was facing that exact situation now. Although five death knights were besieging Norfolk, none of them were his match at all. However, the perfect cooperation between the five death knights made his speed almost useless. They were greatly restricting his movements, and even though he was moving from left to right like a black ray of lightning, he was still like a bug trapped in a transparent jar, which could never break through the invisible walls. The attacks that Norfolk launched were all blocked by the death knights, and Norfolk's figure also appeared in between the death knights. There was a tinge of panic on his sullen face, and even though he was well aware that he wouldn't be able to share much of his master's burden with his current abilities, since the enemy was too overpowering. He still didn't mind risking his life to grasp even the slightest opportunity for his master. Norfolk grabbed the retribution daggers, each embellished with gems of curse, with his pale hands while staring coldly at the five death knights. Maroon tattoos climbed out of the collar and cuffs of the robe, and quickly covered Norfolk's exposed skin. His pale face became even more terrifying and menacing because of the blood red lines. The bloody odor that his body emitted also became increasingly stronger. Back in the green dragon's lair, Norfler drank the blood of three green dragons. Although it was the lowest level type among all Wyrms, it was still a true descendant of the ancient Wyrms. After all, the power in its blood was far beyond what ordinary people could imagine. The massive power contained in the dragon blood was not consumed entirely when Norfler entered the legendary realm, and there was still a large portion of it left, which would even be enough to support him until he reached level 24. At this moment, Norfler squeezed out the remaining power in his blood and although it was beyond what his body could take, it was enough to make his abilities rise by a small level, within a short period of time. Although he knew that his improved strength would have a very insignificant effect on the current situation, he still did it nonetheless. In the blink of an eye, Norfolk's body was already engulfed in the thick blood flames, and two red rays of light almost a meter long were released from the retribution daggers in his hands. The violent and bloodthirsty aura seemed to be surging towards the death knights in the surroundings. Under the oppression of the aura, even the death knights, who had once carried out a massacre in the breezy plains, under the retribution knight Rodhart could not help but break into a commotion. Boom! Norfolk suddenly appeared in front of a death knight, and the two red rays of light emitted from the retribution daggers overlapped on the death knight's body. His lance broke, and the nightmare beast wailed while its body crumbled into pieces because of the red light. At this moment, Norfolk, who was in the middle of the death knights that were surrounding him looked a little illusory, while the red flames shrouded his body. Norfolk's sudden eruption was beyond the death knight's expectations. After all, the death knights were actually only at the peak of level 19. Although Rod Hart's supportive magic spells had given them some assistance, and the Death Knights could also exert powerful combat power above the legendary level, through their seamless cooperation, one, it would be impossible for them to resist the attacks of level 23 powerhouses if they were singled out. After attacking successfully, Norfolk did not continue attacking, and instead rushed towards the center of the palace without stopping because his master was struggling while fighting the terrifying Retribution Knight. However, the hundreds of Death Knights, that Rod Hart had summoned were still terrifying and not to be belittled, even though their army was no longer as big as it used to be. Although Norfolk had killed a death knight and broken away from the encirclement, there were more death knights rushing towards him and surrounding him before he could even get far. In the blink of an eye, Norfolk was once again surrounded by a formation made up of ten death knights that cooperated seamlessly, making it impossible for him to advance again. Everything seemed to have returned to normal. Although Norfolk had unleashed all his potential, he was again blocked by a stronger wall, and could only roar furiously under the siege of the Death Knights. In the blink of an eye, Norfolk was once again surrounded by a formation made up of ten Death Knights that cooperated seamlessly, making it impossible for him to advance again. Everything seemed to have returned to normal. Although Norfolk had unleashed all his potential, he was again blocked by a stronger wall, and could only roar furiously under the siege of the Death Knights. The Lichu Falusi was riding the humorous Wyrm, and waving the skeleton staff not too far away from Norfolk, he continuously released necromagic spells and moved around with more than ten death knights. Although the humorous Wyrm could still fly in the air, the death knight's nightmare beast could also move in the air. Their power and abilities were not affected at all. Hence, it was rather difficult for Ufalusi to deal with them. On the ground, a black vortex was continuously spitting out an undead army that consisted of skeletal warriors that formed hordes. Helgals which were launching hellfire bombs, and skeleton mages who were waving skeleton staffs. All sorts of undead creatures surged out of the vortex like a grayish-white tide. Up Ted Chapter Sn and Velvin, calm, however, the triangle formed by the three death knights blocked the front of the undead army like an efficient grinder. The three black lances were stirring up bones and ashes, 
which seemed like heavy snowfall, the necromancers had always been proud of the daunting tide of death, which brought endless horror to the world. However, it was firmly restrained from advancing by the three death knights, and regardless of how many undead creatures there were, it was impossible for them to force the three death knights to retreat. Compared to Norfolk, Ufalusi wasn't as loyal to Linley. After all, he only chose to surrender to Linley and become his slave because his life was threatened. However, regardless of whether he was willing or not, the binding power of the soul contract made Ufalusi too scared to even show the slightest dissatisfaction with Linley under any circumstances. Otherwise, Linley would be able to extinguish his soul fire easily. However, in the current situation, Ufalusi was not going all out and risking his life like Norfler did, even though he didn't spare any effort, either. Although he would have to be buried with Linley if the latter died, he would not take the initiative to reverse the sequence and die before Linley did. Besides, Ufalusi also knew that no matter how much power he put out, it would be futile in the face of the sanctuary-level retribution knight. He felt that it would be better to buy some time by holding the death knights back and share some of the burden with Linley. On the other side of the palace, the Lord of Nightmares and the Crimson Dragon were also surrounded by several death knights. The Lord of Nightmares was actually rather powerful. After all, he was chosen to be sealed in the summoning lamp by Osric. How could it be weak? Unfortunately, he was good at mental strength attacks, which the death knights and nightmare beasts were highly immune to. Hence, he could not quite handle the four death knights that were his opponents. However, the humorous Weirm had fused with the heart of the fallen in the Black Stone Mountains previously, and had better combat senses than most humorous Weirms. Its body was also replaced by that of the Crimson Dragon. Apart from the strong death aura, it was probably no different from real Weirms. Besides, it was definitely not inferior to real Weirms of the same level in terms of combat effectiveness. It flat its large, fleshy wings while its body hovered in the air. It would spit out some dragon breath, or release some dragon language magic. Although it did not have the upper hand, it wasn't as pathetic as the Lord of Nightmares. Conoris could not be bothered to complain about anything, either. As the legendary powerhouse of the team, who was second to Linley, Conoris was also besieged by twenty of Rodhart's death knights. Conoris already had an extra silver white spear, but it was not a transformed version of the debris of the stars, nothingness. Instead, it was a product of the forging workshop of the Tower of Dusk, which was a standard weapon for the guardian knights of the brilliant shrine. It was known as the Holy Light Cross. There were two types of Maggeths on the spear, the Holy Light Strike and the Judgment of Light. The power of the Holy Light Strike was rather ordinary, and it was somewhat like the fireball magic of mages. On the other hand, the Judgment of Light was higher than level 15, and would cause certain damage even to undead creatures that were close to the legendary level. In the era when Conoris had been an ancient deity, there had been no difference between mages and warriors. Both martial arts and magic were methods of controlling power, and as long as it could kill the enemy, it would be a useful skill. Even the high elves of the Dark Age did not draw a clear line between magic and martial arts and divide them into two separate professions. There was once a prestigious high elves legion that dominated Anril and owned three standard types of equipment, which included the Blade of Heartbreak, in addition to the Pharaoh's Robe and the Dark Moon Staff. That was enough to prove that the members of the Magic Legion possessed brilliant martial skills, on top of mastering the profound attributes of magic. In fact, the so-called division between mages and warriors only emerged amongst the humans. Since not all people could learn magic, mages became a noble profession. Hence, mages did not bother to learn martial arts painstakingly. They would spend their extra time learning pharmaceutics and inscription. Although Conoris used to be a demon deity and a master of deception and conspiracies who was best at backstabbing, he was not entirely clueless about martial arts. Besides, his perfect body was said to be much stronger than the ancient Weirms and the Titans. The terrifying power of his combat skills was probably not inferior to that of powerful magic, either. Although the Holy Light Cross was merely a standard weapon, its effects also varied depending on the person using it. Conoris waved the Holy Light Cross in his hand, which emitted bright silver rays of light. It seemed to even be able to devour the formation formed by the twenty death knights. However, Conoris had yet to fuse completely with the perfect body, after all. Hence, the power that he could exert was at most level 24. Although Conoris seemed to have the upper hand on the surface, he was well aware that the battle formation formed by the 20 death knights was just like an extremely durable net with infinite tinsel strength. Regardless of how much force he applied, he would never be able to rip the net apart. Although there seemed to be no danger for now, Conoris knew very well that once there were changes to the other teams and more death knights joined in, he would probably die. Besides, the death knights wouldn't seal his soul like Osric had and his soul would become a nourishing supplement for them, 
Even though he was an ancient deity, Conoris was anxious, but he couldn't think of a way to get out even after racking his brains. Hence, he could only pin his hopes on Lin Lee. However, judging from the current situation on Lin Lee's side, Conoris felt that his chances were too slim. Lin Lee's opponent was a true sanctuary powerhouse. Lin Lee saw everything that happened on the battlefield. At this moment, the benefits of demolishing the battlefield were also obvious. Although the situation that his subordinates were facing was terrible, they could at least persist for a little while. If hundreds of knights got into a battle formation, his subordinates would probably have to face a massive number of death knights at the same time. They probably wouldn't be able to persist for another moment. Of course, even so, the current situation was still not optimistic for Lin Li. Rodhart was a true sanctuary powerhouse. Even if he did not summon those death knights, Lin Li still wouldn't win with his current strength. Lin Li's subordinates were all struggling to hang on and keep up with their defense under the siege of the death knights. They couldn't afford to support him and give him aid at all. The fight between Lin Li and Rodhart could not be considered a battle anymore. Although the former had already gotten a certain enlightenment about the power of the sanctuary realm, it was still ridiculously small and insignificant in front of a real sanctuary powerhouse. It was just like a tiny firefly, competing for glory with the moon. Damn it. Fortunately, I didn't listen to Conoris and act rashly when I first came here. Otherwise, I would have died long ago. While dodging Rodhart's sword pathetically and breaking out in a cold sweat, he felt fortunate that he hadn't been tempted by polar snow and raging flames back then. When Lin Li went to the underground palace for the first time, he was merely a mage who had just entered the legendary realm, and his only subordinates were Norfolar and Ufalusi. At that time, Conoris was just a soul trapped in a hammer. When he saw the debris of the stars, polar snow and raging flames, he repeatedly encouraged Lin Li to collect them. According to what Conoris said back then, Rodhart had been purified by the Prophet Willen in the past. Even though he was still alive, he was still seriously injured. However, it didn't seem to be the case. Not only did he still possess sanctuary-level powers, he even managed to summon the Death Knights. Given Lin Li's strength during the first trip, he definitely couldn't have retaliated against the Death Knights, even if Rodhart had not attacked him. 1. It probably refers to a group of more than just five. Fortunately, although Lin Li was a little tempted, he decided not to rashly acquire polar snow and raging flames, because he was worried about Rodhart, who had been in deep slumber. However, it was mostly also because he couldn't bear to let go of the natural magical domain, formed by polar snow and raging flames. It seemed that there were also benefits to being greedy at times. Had Lin Li not been so greedy at the time, the consequences would have been unimaginable. Of course, even with Lin Li's current strength, which was several times stronger than before, he didn't find the current situation any better. Rodhart's eternal frost blade would make Lin Li feel like he was on the brink of death and break out in a cold sweat whenever he swung it. Lin Li's hair was drenched in sweat, and although there were no wounds on his body, he still looked rather disheveled. Every stab of Rodhart's sword was aimed at a fatal spot. If Lin Li were to get stabbed, he would probably be close to death. Although Lin Li managed to dodge all of Rodhart's attacks, there were no emotions on Rodhart's pale face. Instead, the soul fire in his eyes seemed to have solidified without any fluctuations. Rodhart did not pause in his movements at all, and he tried to stab Lin Li again after he missed. He was as quick as the flash. It was not an exaggeration to say that his sword was as quick as lightning, and it really looked like lightning had flashed through the air in the cave. Lin Li was already tense and worried in the first place, and now he felt like his heart was about to jump out of his chest. He quickly pointed the Helios Scepter and put up more than 10 layers of defense in front of him. At the same time, he infused mental strength into his domain robe and tried to stimulate the space power in the robe in a bid to manipulate the space around him with all his might. Buzz. A ray of light from the sword flashed past Lin Li's cheeks and cut off a strand of sweat-drenched hair, after which it hit the rock wall of the cave behind. The distance between the outside world and the underground palace was unknown, but after the light penetrated the rock wall, it seemed to have formed a window in the wall, and Lin Li broke out in a cold sweat uncontrollably. He even wondered if he would become dehydrated because of the constant perspiration before he got killed by Rodhart. Fortunately, Lin Li had the domain robe that was infused with the Immortal King's space power. Otherwise, he would have died a long time ago. However, Lin Li knew clearly that it was impossible to guarantee his safety with the domain robe alone. Lin Li didn't have much control over space power and was now just trying his best to stimulate the power in the domain robe. He still couldn't control the space power as and when he pleased. That would provide Rodhart with opportunities to attack whenever he was manipulating and warping the space within. Once Rodhart detected the rules, Lin Li would probably be on the brink of death. After Rodhart launched the attack, 
He didn't look at the results at all, and continued to wave his eternal frost blade casually. The black flames on his body that his death aura condensed into did not move at all, and there was another arc-shaped ray of light from the sword that seemed to be more than 10 meters long sweeping towards Lin Li instead. Fortunately, Lin Li had made preparations a long time ago. He was not complacent just because he managed to dodge the sword just now. At the instant that the portion of his hair was sliced off, he had already activated the power in the domain robe again. Upon sight of the sword that was more than 10 meters long, Lin Li's figure twisted before disappearing again as if he were a reflection in the water. There were now several more holes that were more than 10 meters deep in the wall. Faced with Rod Hart's effortless attacks, Lin Li would have to try his best to deal with them without bothering to counterattack at all. Putting aside the fact that Lin Li did not have the ability to counterattack, he wouldn't be able to pose the slightest threat to Rod Hart even if he had the chance to launch a few legendary magic attacks. However, in the process of dodging, Lin Li also gradually sensed that something was amiss. He had seen a sanctuary powerhouse attacking, and although Rod Hart exhibited sanctuary level powers, his attacks were still a little stiff, and he seemed to be attacking out of instinct. That was not the point, though. The most important thing was that Lin Li, who was being attacked, had clearly felt that Rod Hart's condition was gradually changing. At the thought of the solidified soul fire in Rod Hart's eyes, a terrifying conjecture suddenly appeared in Lin L's mind. Could it be that Rod Hart, who has forced me into desperation, has not really awakened from his sleep? The changes in Rod Hart's body, that appear as the battle progresses are actually the signs of his body awakening. Lin Li was frightened by his own thoughts. If Rod Hart had yet to awaken at this moment, what would it be like once he truly woke up? In order to avoid Rod Hart's attacks, Lin Li could be considered to have given it his all. If those attacks weren't launched with Rod Hart's fullest strength, as the battle progressed, the terrible conjecture that Lin Li had was gradually verified too. There were obvious changes in Rod Hart's fighting style. His initial power was gradually increasing, making it harder for Lin Li to deal with them. The most obvious sign was the fact that the domain robe, that had been helping Lin Li escape, gradually became weaker at warding off Rod Hart's attacks. At the same time, the situation in several other battles was also changing with Rod Hart's awakening. Besieging Lin Li's subordinates, the Death Knights were no longer relying on their seamless cooperation, but had begun to use more ingenious battle tactics, which caused the already disadvantaged Lin Li's group to fall into a tougher predicament. However, that was not the worst situation possible. Lin Li was well aware that he would truly be in a hopeless predicament once Rod Hart really woke up. Besides, he could tell from the changes in Rod Hart and the Death Knights that Rod Hart was not far from his actual awakening. Despite knowing that the situation was getting worse, Lin Li couldn't do anything at all at this moment. He could only hope that he and his subordinates would be able to persist on for a while. Finally, Rod Hart suddenly stopped attacking Lin Li and instead lowered his head a little to conceal his face. He stood quietly in midair with the eternal frost blade, which he was pointing diagonally toward the ground, in his hand. The red cloak on his back slowly stopped flapping in the wind, while the black flame that the death aura had condensed into gradually stopped rolling as if it had been solidified by an invisible force. On the various areas of the battlefield, the death knights that were besieging Lin Li's subordinates suddenly stopped attacking, and they raised their lances high in the air one by one and looked up at Rod Hart, who was in midair, seemingly paying tribute to their king with their greatest chivalry. Explore Todd T. Stories at Noel, Ben, CM. The battlefield fell silent in an instant, and even Lin Li and his subordinates did not take advantage of the stoppage to retaliate against the Death Knights. Of course, they didn't do that out of respect for Rod Hart or Honor, but rather because they were afraid to act rashly because of the somber atmosphere. He, Rod Hart chuckled, though it was unknown if he had done it out of contempt or self-deprecation. He hung his head low, and said in a deep voice, I finally woken up, how should I thank you, anonymous kid? Rod Hart's voice was very soft, but it seemed to be exceptionally clear in this silent battlefield. Although Lin Li already knew what was happening, he still felt a little freaked out when he heard it straight from Rod Hart's mouth, and cold chills were sent from his feet to the top of his head uncontrollably. Lin Li did not answer Rod Hart, because he knew that Rod Hart was just asking a rhetorical question. Instead, he paid attention to Rod Hart's actions, Ha 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 ha. Rod Hart raised his head and guffawed loudly all of a sudden while the solidified black flames around him also seemed to have come alive all of a sudden and become 100 times more violent. Lin Li, who was the closest to Rod Hart, almost fell from the air at the instant that he felt the violent aura. Lin Li then regained his balance and held the Helios scepter tightly while looking at Rod Hart, who was going mad. However, he dared not let his guard down. After laughing maniacally for a long time, Rod Hart gradually stopped but he loudly sneered, what a joke, my dearest brother, were you so silly to think that I would feel guilty and remorseful for the lives of those insignificant figures, ever since I stepped onto this path, 
Those tiny ants could only become the stepping stones for me to reach the top, that's all that their lives are worth. After Rod Hart became the Retribution Knight, he led the Death Knights on a massacre in the Breezy Plains, which reduced the population of the region by a third. Although there wasn't a huge population in the Breezy Plains at that time, there were still more than 100,000 casualties. That was probably the number of people Rod Hart had killed. With the souls of those people, he entered the Sanctuary Realm and became the first Sanctuary-level Retribution Knight in the history of Anril. Lin Lee could tell from Rod Hart's words that Willen did not completely purify Rod Hart at the beginning, probably because he was blinded by his false repentance. In fact, Willen was not to blame, since they were brothers after all, and since he saw a glimmer of hope, he definitely wouldn't be willing to kill his brother with his own hands. However, the problem was that Rod Hart didn't care about brotherhood at all, unlike Willen. How unfair. Although Linley could understand the prophet Willen's plight and reasons, he still felt resentful towards him. After venting his frustration, Rod Hart seemed to have returned to normal. After uttering something in an inaudible voice, he finally shifted his gaze back onto Linley and said, how should I thank you? Why don't you let your soul live forever with my soul fire? Lin Li had long known that it was impossible for there to be harmony and kindness between him and Retribution Knight. Hence, he was not surprised by Rod Hart's words at all. Although Rod Hart's murmurs were in the language of the High Elves and were almost inaudible, Lin Li was still greatly taken aback. The Retribution Knight, who had yet to experience the Dark Age, was actually cursing the Immortal King. Before Lin Li could figure out what was going on, Rod Hart had already raised the Eternal Frost Blade in his hand, and his figure flashed a little before he pierced Lin Li's heart with his sword. At the same time that Rod Hart stabbed Lin Li, the Death Knights on the battlefield also put down their lances and bombarded Lin Li and company vigorously. This time, it was very different from before. After Rod Hart really awakened, those Death Knights seemed to have become several times stronger. Their battle formations were more flexible. Their tactics were smarter, and even the strength of each individual Death Knight improved tremendously. Under the siege of the Death Knights, everyone slipped into actual desperation while struggling painstakingly. It was as if they were constantly having a close shave with death. There were more and more obvious wounds on the large body of the Red Humorous Wyrm, and even its strong defense could not stop the sharp lances of the Death Knights. The Red Humorous Wyrm immediately spat out some blazing dragon breath, but the two Death Knights, who were the first to bear the brunt of it immediately emanated a thick cloud of black fog. They then rushed out of the black fog, with their lances and pierced straight at the eye sockets of the red humorous wyrm, which were burning with soul fire. The dragon breath of red humorous wyrm was actually not inferior to legendary magic, but its attacks were blocked by the two death knights. Actually, it was not just the dragon breath. The red humorous wyrm was also not inferior to the real wyrms, be it its highly destructive claws that could rip the earth apart or its tail that could destroy mountains. They were less powerful when facing the Death Knights. It was undeniable that the Death Knights were extremely good at defending against defensive spells, especially with the support from the Retribution Knight, Rod Hart. They could have used some strong attacks to force the Death Knights to retreat in exchange for a chance to catch their breath. However, after Rod Hart really woke up, the attacks had almost lost all their effects. They could not break the Animus defense at all. One could only imagine their predicament. Ufalus's Tide of Death would be able to summon an infinite army of undead creatures, as long as his mana was not exhausted. With his current strength, the huge amount of mana would be enough to support the tide of death for several days and nights without any reduction at all. However, the terrifying army of undead creatures was simply weak and pathetic. The three death knights formed a simple triangular battle formation and bulldozed their way through while launching their attacks. They actually arrived in front of the vortex in the blink of an eye and stirred up the tide of death. Seeing the tide of death state, Ufalusi was helpless and at a loss for what to do even though he was extremely anxious. Riding the red humorous Wyrm, he focused all of his energy on dealing with the Death Knight's attacks. The humorous Wyrm was also covered in welts and wounds caused by the erosion of darkness and the lances. Ufalusi looked even more disheveled, and his robe was so tattered and torn that he looked like a beggar. Fortunately, there was nothing but a skeleton beneath the robe. Hence, it did not suffer too much damage. During the sudden outburst previously, the vampire Norfler who killed a Death Knight managed to remain unharmed despite being besieged by the Death Knights, whose strength was greatly improved thanks to his incredible speed. However, the bloody flames on his body were no longer as intense as they used to be. Clearly, the power that had burst out of him was gradually declining. At this moment, a look of hopelessness and anxiety formed on Norfler's face because he saw the predicament that his master Lindley was in. The Holy Death Knights were a force that were transformed in the Eternal Furnace, and they had the characteristics of Death Knights, but not their weaknesses. In a sense, 
they could be considered perfect existences. If they were facing ordinary death knights, they would definitely win. However, they were now facing death knights that were working under a sanctuary level retribution knight. When Rodhart truly awakened, the death knights immediately exploded with power that was several times greater than before. The holy death knights couldn't hang on any longer. Damn it, do you have any more tricks? Hurry and use them. Do you really not have any more? Conoris muttered incessantly while waving the holy light cross in his hand and casting spells continuously. He managed to somewhat hold on despite being besieged by twenty death knights. However, there were still wounds appearing continuously on the perfect body even though it was claimed to be stronger than the ancient Wyrm. Although Lin Li did not come up with a solution to save them from the dangerous predicament just now, Conoris still believed that it was impossible for Lin Li to take the risk without any preparations. Now that Rodhard had woken up, and the matter had escalated to a critical point, there should be no reason for him to delay unless he really had no solution. If that kid really has no solution, impossible, Conoris thought to himself, after which he shook his head profusely as if he was trying to get rid of the horrible thought as fast as he could. However, Lin Li, whom Conoris had placed high hopes on, was behaving in a manner that left everyone else hopeless. Regardless of how close one might be to a certain realm, they would still be worlds apart as long as they did not step into it. It would be no exaggeration to say that Lin Li was just like a tiny ant compared to Rod Hart. While being compelled by Rod Hart, Lin Li managed to survive till now, which was actually considered to be rather miraculous. You are great, but unfortunately, Rod Hart did not continue to explain what the unfortunate matter was, and simply raised his left arm to grab the air while facing Lin Li. The black flames around him suddenly split into countless revolving giant black pythons, while dashing in the direction that Rod Hart was pointing at, after which they darted towards Lin Li menacingly. Lin Li's hair was still wet as if he had just washed it as it was still dripping with sweat. His hands were also shaking when he was holding the Helios scepter. He had just escaped from Rod Hart's sword, and before he could even catch his breath, he saw Rod Hart launching yet another powerful and terrifying magic spell, which immediately frightened him. Actually, Lin Li had been rather tense ever since Rod Hart appeared and he had been living every second on the brink of death, his goosebumps had never vanished at all. At the moment that the magic was blasted, the maggots on the domain robe lit up instantly, and Lin Li's figure was immediately teleported to a spot more than 10 meters away. That was considered the only benefit that Lin Li had obtained in the battle. He had become more and more proficient in mastering the space power in the domain robe. However, the Eternal Frost Blade that Rod Hart used was also a powerful magical weapon that utilized space power. As its user, he naturally wouldn't be clueless about space power. Even though he was not a mage, he was a sanctuary powerhouse, who probably had a good understanding of space power through the Eternal Frost Blade, which Lin Li could never compare to. Lin Li was able to escape the dangerous situation with the power of the Domain Robe, only because Rod Hart hadn't really woken up yet previously merely fighting instinctively. Rod Hart now managed to get a grasp of the routine of Lin Li's usage of space power after just looking at Lin Li for a few times. As soon as Lin Li's figure appeared in a spot that was more than 10 meters away, he saw Rod Hart's magic spells, which turned out to be right in front of him. At this moment, Lin Li tried to repeat the trick, but to no avail. Fortunately, he didn't pin all his hopes of surviving on the domain robe. He swung the Helios scepter forward continuously, all of a sudden, a wave of darkness darker and deeper than the cave appeared and shrouded everything around him. The eternal darkness was a type of dark magic that was included in the darkness scripture and had the effect of negating the enemy's attack using the user's own mana. Lin Li had almost infinite mana and mental strength and was not inferior even to a mage of the sanctuary realm. Rod Hart was essentially still a retribution knight and there was a difference in mana between him and a pure mage of the sanctuary realm. Besides, it was impossible for all his mana to be released, regardless of how powerful the magic that he cast was, there was almost no break at all. As soon as Lin Li cast his Eternal Darkness spell, which he had prepared long ago, Rod Hart's magic was already right in front of him. However, to Lin Li's surprise, Rod Hart's attack did not directly hit his body, and instead split into numerous black pythons, and shot into the surrounding space before Lin Li came into contact with the Eternal Darkness. Magics below the sanctuary level would all have their own characteristics, and experienced mages would be able to determine what magic the opponent was casting at the moment that the opponent attacked, even if the magic was launched instantaneously. However, while there were some well-known sanctuary magic spells in the sanctuary realm, most of them were just the arbitrary use of nomological power by the sanctuary powerhouses, who tried to adapt to the situation. In order to predict the magic launched by a sanctuary powerhouse, 
one would have to have a fairly deep understanding of the nomological power that the opponent mastered. Although Lin Li had already gained some enlightenment about the power of the sanctuary realm, he was still worlds apart from the sanctuary powerhouse, Rodhart, in terms of mastering nomological power. Lin Li used the eternal darkness magic, which could be considered the strongest defensive magic he currently possessed, to deal with Rodhart's offensive spell, which seemed to be powerful enough to destroy the world. However, when the magic was right in front of him, it didn't strike him, and instead darted in all directions into the surrounding space. Obviously, it was not an offensive spell. With the outburst of magic, Lin Li could immediately sense that the space around him seemed to be solidifying. He quickly stimulated a small portion of space power in the domain robe, only to realize that he had lost contact with the surrounding space after giving it a try. The space he was in seemed to have been removed. Let's see where you can run within my netherworld dungeon. Weakling, Rodhart sneered while appearing in front of the black space, where Linley was at. He then stabbed his eternal frost blade at Linley, aiming at his heart. Although eternal darkness had a high defensive effect against offensive spells, it couldn't defend against a sword at all. The only useful effect of the sword it had was the concealment of the user's figure, which might cause some hindrance to ordinary warriors, but it wouldn't be a problem to Rodhart at all. After discovering that the space power in the domain robe, could not be used. Lin Li naturally guessed what Rod Hart was thinking. The Helios Scepter disappeared and was instantly replaced by two pieces of the debris of the stars. He held Thunderbolt with one hand and nothingness with the other. Seeing that the sharp sword was passing through the darkness and darting towards his heart, Lin Li waved his hand to throw out Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt, which contained the laws of destruction, was the most powerful and tricky one out of the seven debris of the stars and had indestructible power. Of course, with Lin Li's current strength, he was still far from being truly invincible because he did not have stars of fury. However, he could still somewhat manage to block Rodhart's sword. At the same time that he was attacking Rodhart with Thunderbolt, Lin Li swung his debris of the stars, nothingness, into the surrounding space. Lin Li didn't know what kind of magic spell the Netherworld dungeon was, but he was certain that it was a type of spell that would result in spatial confinement. What else would be more suitable than nothingness? which contained the laws of time and space for breaking the confinement of space. Boom! A loud and violent explosion made the entire cave quake. A large amount of gravel was constantly being shaken off the top of the cave, which seemed like it would collapse at any moment. There was a look of slight surprise on Rod Hart's face. He grabbed the eternal frost blade, which had been blocked, looked at it, and then shifted his gaze onto the two pieces of the debris of the stars in Lin Lis hands which were rather far away. He could feel that the power that blocked his sword was not entirely from the human mage Lin Li, but from that lightning-like weapon. The netherworld dungeon that he had cast was difficult to break even with the eternal frost blade, and yet Lin Li managed to use another spear-like weapon to break through the confinement and escape. That was clear evidence that the spear might be more powerful than the eternal frost blade. As a sanctuary powerhouse, Rod Hart was no longer easily tempted by ordinary foreign objects, but the power shown by the debris of the stars in Lin Li's hands still piqued his interest. In Rod Hart's opinion, the two powerful weapons were wasted in Lin Li's hands and he felt that he was the only one who could truly exert their full power. When he took out the debris of the stars, Lin Li knew that Rod Hart would inevitably develop an interest in it. However, he felt that Rod Hart wouldn't waver, because his goal was to kill Lin Li anyway. After getting out of the danger with the power of the two pieces of the debris of the stars, Lin Li didn't dare to stay still for a slightest moment. Instead, he turned around and flew towards the palace where Rod Hart had slept in. The underground palace had long been destroyed during the intense battle, which turned the luxurious building into ruins. The palace where Rod Hart had slept in was the only one that was intact. Lin Li dived into the palace and took a quick glance at the various things in the palace. However, he ignored the previous magical materials that had already turned into waste. He only felt a little upset about the fact that he had underestimated his opponent. The various arrangements, decor of the palace, and the large amount of precious magic materials invested in it were expensive enough to make any major forces in the breezy plains go bankrupt. Not to mention, top knowledge and skills of various fields were also used in the arrangements that Lin Li had prepared painstakingly. However, all of Lin Li's efforts had gone in vain because he didn't even get to buy a single minute for himself. Although he had underestimated Rod Hart's strength, Another reason was also that sanctuary powerhouses were truly too powerful and terrifying. Lin Li fled into the palace, and before he even did anything, he saw some distortions in the space ahead not too far away from him. After which Rod Hart, who was covered in black flames, came out carrying the eternal frost blade. Lin Li was taken aback, and quickly retreated while raising the debris of the star's thunderbolt in his arm, shooting it at Rod Hart. Seeing a ray of lightning exuding a violent aura, 
that seemed to be able to destroy everything, Rodhart raised the eternal frost blade and gently swung it in a circle at the ray of lightning, which then seemed to have frozen all of a sudden. It hovered in front of Rodhart, and the violent aura of destruction vanished without a trace. Rodhart stretched out his hand to grab Thunderbolt. Without taking another glance, he swung his sword and stabbed at Linley without pausing at all. The sword contained all of Rodhart's enlightenment in the laws of killing. It did not contain the power that could destroy the world or a dazzling ray of light. All that was left was the endless somberness and nirvana. It was as if one glance would be all it took for the soul to sink forever. Discover in W chapter S and in 0 LB. Calm. The sword attack could be considered the embodiment of Rodhart's full strength. It was the strongest blow that the sanctuary level retribution knight Rodhart had ever launched. Even the sanctuary powerhouses of the same level might not dare to take on the sword attack head on. Lin Li, who had just seen the door of the sanctuary realm, would never be able to counter the sword strike, even if he were to put in all his effort. Regardless of how many trump cards he had, he would only end up being destroyed by the sword. Facing the sword that put him in despair, Lin Li didn't take out any more pieces of the debris of the stars. If he had already been a sanctuary powerhouse, he would have probably been able to block the blow with any debris of the stars piece of his. However, he couldn't resist Rodhart's sword at all, even if he were to use all of his debris of the stars. Lin Li even put away nothingness, but he pulled out a light green ring from his ring of endless storm, which looked like grass rings that children would weave. However, the entire ring was glowing with a green halo and exuding an incomparably majestic vitality, as well as some holy aura that could not be profaned. Looking at the ring in Lin Li's hands, which appeared rather ordinary, Rodhart paused in attacking with his sword, and there was a tinge of fear that could not be concealed on his pale and cold face. Lin Li didn't seem to be in a desperate situation at all. He gently pinched the green ring with two fingers, smiled at Rodhart, and nonchalantly said, you've seen it, eh. Willen purified you once, and I can purify you for the second time now. By the way, you probably don't know this yet, but an acquaintance living in the Big Rift wanted me to tell you that the ring that your brother took away back then actually belongs to a pair of rings. No, that's impossible. Rodhart exclaimed with a look of disbelief. He no longer hesitated, and instead stabbed at Linley rapidly. Linley no longer looked as disheveled as he used to. Still smiling, he looked at Rodhart and infused some mental strength into the ring on his hand. All of a sudden, a strong and intense wave of holy aura spewed out endlessly, and the brilliance of holy light instantly filled the entire palace, enshrouding Rodhart's figure. Rodhart immediately froze on the spot, while the raging black flames formed by the surrounding death aura became more and more obvious under the pressure of the holy aura, which seemed to be flickering like candle light in a storm. The eternal frost blade in his hand contained intense and powerful nomological power of killing, but it gradually dissipated under the holy aura. Looking at the changes in Rodhart, Linley finally heaved a sigh of relief. In fact, according to the original plan, he didn't have to experience those dangers at all. However, he didn't expect Rodhart to be so strong that he almost killed him. Fortunately, Linley persisted to the very end. The ring on Lin Li's hand was one of the gains he'd obtained from his previous trip to the Big Rift. He was obviously referring to Nifa who wanted to be the next Dragon of Destruction when he mentioned the acquaintance in the Big Rift to Rodhart. When Nifa and Lin Li first made the deal, he once mentioned that apart from the domain robe, he also had other relics of the Immortal King. The ring was one of them. The ring was not a piece of magical accessory made by someone, but an alteration of the fruit of the Tree of Eternity. It contained unrivaled divine power, which was sufficient to purify all evil and filthy existences in the world. Speaking of divine power, the debris of the stars, holy light, which Lin Li owned actually contained much more power than the ring. However, in order to exert the infinite power contained in holy light, Lin Li still had to gain further enlightenment about the laws contained in holy light. He also had to induce his mental strength into the ring to activate it. Nifa used to own a pair of rings, which were transformed from the fruit of the tree of eternity. One was given to Willen for a deal that they struck when Willen and his brother Rodhart explored the big rift. As for the second ring, Nifa gave it to Lin Li, claiming that it was an eyesore. In fact, it could be regarded as a compensation for deceiving Lin Li. However, Nifa was too embarrassed to admit it. However, although the ring was powerful, it was still not enough to subdue Rodhart, let alone purify him completely. Willen was rather powerful, and he was the sanctuary powerhouse who had defeated Apophis. Yet, he couldn't use that ring to really purify Rodhart. Perhaps there were emotional factors involved, but the insufficient power of the ring was certainly also an important reason. That was also the reason Lin Li didn't take out the ring immediately at the beginning. He decided to take it out now because he felt that it was the right timing. Although things seemed to have deviated from the original plan, 
because of Lin Lis' underestimation of his opponent, Lin Lis' painstaking persistence finally brought everything back to the original plan. In the palace where Rod Hart awakened, Lin Li had gone all out and made plenty of arrangements, including the Requiem Array and all sorts of advanced magic traps regardless of the cost. However, his real motive was to trap Rod Hart for a period of time because he had hidden a larger Holy Light Magath array, and the most critical part of it was not in the palace, but in the underground palace outside. At this moment, the Archbishop Inglos of the Brilliant Shrine was leading more than 300 believers of Holy Light, who were above level 15 to get into a strange formation outside the underground palace. That was the most critical part of the Holy Light Magath array. The power of the Holy Light Magath array was omnipresent, but no trace of it could be found. Under normal circumstances, no one could detect its existence. But once there was divine power within it, the divine power would be multiplied by up to ten times. However, the Holy Light Magath Array could not be activated with just a few mana sources. It would still require the accumulation of power through the continuous prayers of the believers of the Holy Light. Lin Lis' original plan was to use the various arrangements in the palace to trap the awakened Retribution Knight, Rodhart, and then get rid of him easily once enough power was accumulated in the Holy Light Magath Array. However, Linley didn't expect Rodhart to be so tough after awakening, so tough that the arrangements he'd made in the palace were nullified without even lasting for a minute. In the end, he inevitably faced an intense and horrid battle. Linley released his fingers, and the ring that had evolved from the fruit of the Tree of Eternity floated quietly in the air while constantly emitting the brilliance of holy light towards the surroundings. The palace that was initially dim suddenly became extraordinarily bright at this time, but it was not glaring. Linley felt rather refreshed as if all the impurities in his body and soul were washed away in the brilliance of the holy light. However, it was definitely not a pleasant experience for the retribution knight Rodhart. Under the divine power, the death aura on Rodhart's body was forcibly drawn and burnt as if he was having his bones removed. The pain was far beyond imaginable. Rodhart had once experienced the pain of being purified and cursed his brother to fall into deep sleep. He did not expect to awaken from his deep sleep hundreds of years later only to be greeted with such pain. Rodhart's heart was filled with infinite fury and indignation. However, the divine power that filled the air made him lose almost all control of his body, making it difficult for him to even move a finger. Linley took a few steps back, but he did not seem to have let his guard down any lower. After all, he was dealing with a real sanctuary powerhouse. Who knew if he might have to struggle for the last time while being on the brink of death, seeing that the aura on Rodhart's body was getting weaker and weaker, Linley felt rather amazed. He was a legend of Anril from the Dark Age, and yet he was making things hard for Linley. Of course, Rodhart was unwilling to be purified, although he was unable to wave the Eternal Frost Blade in his hand, or even take another step, it did not mean that he really wanted to give up on struggling. Rodhart was glowering at Linley with bloodshot eyes, while muttering a string of obscure notes. With the emergence of every note, the death aura of his body that had been gradually weakened by the purification of divine power, unexpectedly began to rise again immediately. Seeing this change, Linley was instantly astonished, but he soon figured out that the spell Rodhart chanted just now was probably the spell used by the Retribution Knight to gather the power of his underlings. In other words, every bit of strength that Rodhart had now was drawn from the Death Knights outside. Unfortunately, there were only 100-something Death Knights outside. If they were the 1,000 Death Knights recorded in Legends, Rodhart might really get a chance at a comeback. However, at the thought of this, Linley was still rather worried, hence, he immediately took out his debris of the stars. Holy light, although the power he could manipulate was inferior to the holy rings, it was still rather impressive. The only unfortunate thing was the presence of the death knights outside. Lin Lis' original plan was to subdue and take in the death knights after purifying Rodhart. However, it seemed to be a little unlikely. With the addition of the power of the debris of the stars, holy light, the pressure that Rodhart had to withstand suddenly rose sharply and the original death aura of his body was once again relentlessly suppressed. Rodhart looked at Linley with immense fury and anger in his eyes. He even regretted not using his full strength to kill Linley. Rodhart, who had just awakened, simply regarded Linley, an insignificant legendary mage, as a thing to toy with to kill time. Why would a sanctuary powerhouse need to use all his effort to deal with an insignificant legendary mage? Had he not reached this point, how could he have imagined that the insignificant legendary mage would pose a threat to him and bring him so much trouble? However, it was too late to regret. Rodhart was chanting the curse even more quickly. Although the Death Knights had been following him for hundreds of years and made great contributions that helped him enter the sanctuary realm, now that he was facing the threat of being purified, he couldn't care about them anymore. Anyway, if he were to get purified, 
Linley would stand to gain by getting to acquire the Death Knights. As Rod Hart chanted a spell quickly and desperately, a strange scene took place on the battlefield outside the palace. The fierce and menacing Death Knights suddenly stopped fighting, while the soul fire in their eyes flickered. Everyone on Lin Lis' side tensed up as they thought that the Death Knights were about to become stronger again. The current strength and abilities of the Death Knights were already difficult for them to deal with, and if they were to increase further, it would be fatal. However, everyone did not stay nervous for long when they saw to their astonishment that the soul fire in the eyes of the Death Knights was getting somehow extinguished after flickering violently. As the soul fire went out, the bodies of the Death Knights also began decomposing rapidly, and they turned into piles of ashes. Ha! Ah, I knew it. That kid had a solution, Conoris said while holding the broken cross-shaped spear in his hands. Although his body was heavily wounded, he was still looking at the surroundings with a grin. In fact, he even acted like he hadn't cursed at Linley during a moment of hopelessness. There were groundbreaking changes on the battlefield, but the situation on Lin Lis' side in the palace was rather unsatisfactory. Although the abilities of the Death Knights were restricted to the peak of level 19, their soul fire was extremely powerful, and Rodhart swallowed the soul fire of over 100 Death Knights in one go, resulting in a sudden surge in power. The black flames that surrounded him were ignited again, and he swung the eternal frost blade while dashing towards Lin Li menacingly. I want to save some effort and energy, but I can't. Lin Li thought to himself, helplessly while manipulating the debris of the star's holy light and holding the Helios scepter in his hand. At this point, Linley was no longer afraid of Rodhart. Under the suppression of the infinite divine power, Rodhart barely had 1% of his previous strength, even though he was still in the sanctuary level. This battle was quite even, but under the suppression of the divine power, Rodhart's momentary outburst could not last long. Linley wasn't too bothered about Rodhart's situation, either. He went all out to deal with every attack from Rodhart. The fight did not last long. Soon, Rodhart was once again suppressed by the divine power, leaving him with no choice but to remain standing in place with the eternal frost blade. Perhaps because of his resistance towards the divine power, his body was trembling a little. However, Rodhart no longer looked at Linley with so much menace and hatred like before. The redness of his eyes seemed to have faded a little too. How interesting. I never thought that I would be forced into this situation by someone who has yet to even reach the sanctuary realm, Rodhart said in a low voice. Actually, he didn't sound too indignant, but rather a little self-deprecating. Lin Li remained silent and looked at Rodhart coldly. Even though Rodhart seemed to be on the verge of giving up, Lin Li dared not let his guard down at all. At the same time, Lin Li also continuously reminded himself that the person in front of him was the terrifying figure who had killed hundreds of thousands of lives in the breezy plains. Everything would not end until he was completely purified. Since you've seen the Black Dragon, you must also know about my relationship with Willen. You find it peculiar that I chose the opposite path from my brother, don't you? He's a son of the Holy Light, while I'm the fallen Retribution Knight, who has done plenty of evil and killed countless people. Who would believe that we are brothers, said Rodhart, who sounded like he was talking to himself even though he was saying those words to Linley. Rodhart closed his eyes slightly as if opening his eyes was painstaking in his current situation. The menacing armor on his body gradually changed from black to a little gray too, just as if it would break with a poke of the finger. Willen, you are right, but I am not you. How can I resist the temptation of that power? Immortal King, since you're called the Immortal King, why did you leave a crippled arm behind to harm others? Rodhart murmured, sounding rather resentful and regretful. Linley initially didn't want to bother with what Rodhart said, and he felt that it would be enough to see Rodhart getting thoroughly purified with his own eyes. However, when he heard Rodhart saying those words out of nowhere, Linley's heart suddenly jumped. Did Rodhart really choose to become the Retribution Knight because of the Immortal King's broken arm? Legend had it that although the Dragon of Destruction Azardus was killed at the end of the battle between the Immortal King, and the Dragon of Destruction. The Immortal King was also injured by the counter-attack launched by the Dragon of Destruction before his death. One of his arms then landed in the breezy plains. The piece of news was actually confirmed by Nifa and Rog when Lin Li was in the Big Rift. It was said Rodhart had obtained the severed arm of the Immortal King, and thus chose to embark on a completely opposite path from Willen by becoming the Retribution Knight. When Rog watched the intense battle between the Immortal King, and the Dragon of Destruction. He ended up in a horrible state just because he had suffered the erosion of the Immortal King's Death Aura. Rodhart obtained the Immortal King's arm that contained the Infinite Death Aura, which made it easy for him to become the Retribution Knight. Regarding the arm of the Immortal King, Lin Li was suddenly reminded of something that happened a long time ago. Back then, the Seer Bandits attacked Black Cloud's town, all for the sake of the Immortal King's arm that Willen had sealed in the chapel. However, Lin Li did not manage to find the Immortal King's arm in their lair. 
It seemed to have been taken away by some other force. Linley didn't really care about the arm of the Immortal King. He mainly heard from Nifa and Rog that when the arm of the Immortal King was blasted off by the Dragon of Destruction, the Immortal King seemed to be holding a weapon which Linley reckoned to be the Stars of Fury, which he had been trying hard to find. Since Rod Hart had obtained the Immortal King's arm, where did the weapon in his hand go? Linley finally couldn't help asking the Retribution Knight, who was already on the brink of death about it. There was a weapon that was left together with the arm of the Immortal King. Where is it now? Even without any debris of the stars, the Stars of Fury was still a very powerful weapon. According to the standards of Anril, it would probably not be an exaggeration to call it a divine weapon. Linley didn't think that Rod Hart would ignore such a powerful weapon when he obtained the arm of the Immortal King. Ha! Ah. Rod Hart laughed painstakingly while the soul fire in his eyes flickered like a candle in the wind as if it would be extinguished at any time. There was not a single race of death aura at all. You must have seen that weapon, right? Where is it now? Seeing the condition that Rod Hart was in, Linley couldn't help but feel a little anxious. Obviously, the retribution night was already drained, and if Linley were any slower, he might not be able to ask anything in time. Visit in Velbin, CM for Uovals. However, the corners of Rod Hart's mouth curled up in a strange smirk, and he struggled to speak. It, it left the ice and fire behind, and departed. What do you mean departed? Where did it go? Linley darted forward and reached out in a bid to grab Rod Hart's shoulder. However, as soon as he touched Rod Hart's armor, the latter's tall body collapsed like a sculpture made of sand. Damn it, make yourself clear before you die, bastard. Looking at the pile of ashes, on the ground and the eternal frost blade, that was driven into it. Lin Lee was filled with grief and anger. He didn't show any joy of victory at all. He had finally gotten a clue about the Stars of Fury, and yet he had to watch it slip away right in front of him. Damn it, is this a joke? Lin Lee stretched out his hand to pull the Eternal Frost Blade out from the ground. Without even taking another look, he threw it into the Eternal Snowstorm. Although it was a rare and legendary magical weapon, it was worlds apart from the Stars of Fury, and Lin Lee was in no mood to appreciate it now. Lin Lee put away the debris of the star's holy light and the divine ring. He then recalled the majestic divine power in the palace immediately, and even the power that had purified the sanctuary powerhouse disappeared in an instant. Standing still, Lin Lee looked at the original position of the skeleton throne, followed by the ashes on the ground, which made him feel rather emotional. A joyful shriek sounded in the palace, and a petite figure appeared in front of Lin Lee immediately afterwards. It was sticking its tongue out and licking Lin Lee mindlessly. After being licked by Xiao Hua, Lin Lee felt a lot better. He used a magical crystal to lure Xiao Hua to come down before turning around to look in the direction Xiao Hua came from. Conoris, Norfolar, Ufalusi, and the Holy Death Knights that were following them from behind entered from outside. Seeing that Lin Lee was standing in the middle of the palace without any injuries, Norfolar and Ufalusi hurriedly strode towards Lin Lee and exclaimed in unison, Master, it's wonderful that you're all right. Lin Lee nodded and shifted his gaze onto Norfolar. In the previous battle, Lin Lee witnessed the scene of Norfolar unleashing his potential, and he only knew that his vampire servant was not feeling as good as he seemed on the surface. Hence, he took out a potion that was full of dark force and said, drink it. The potion was a byproduct of Lin Lee's formulation of the Tribute of Darkness. Although its effects were inferior to the Tribute of Darkness, it was rather effective for creatures of darkness. Norfolar didn't ask any questions and simply grabbed the potion with both hands, unplugged the cork without hesitation, and poured the potion into his mouth immediately. Although the soul contract, like the blood oath, had conditions that would bind the servant to the master until their deaths, and didn't seem to involve any loyalty, Norfolar chose to take the initiative and risk his own life during the hopeless battle. On the other hand, Ufalusi chose to wait passively. That was the difference in their loyalty. Although Lin Lee did not intend to punish Ufalusi for that, he felt that it was also necessary to reward Norfolar for his loyalty. Seeing the dark force erupting, and surging in Norfolar's body after he consumed the potion, Ufalusi was instantly green with envy and jealousy. He was filled with regret, and wished that he had also risked his life to put up a fight. Although the forty archmages were physically and mentally exhausted after the intense battle, they were still looking at Lin Lee with gazes that were filled with awe, worship, and admiration. The Retribution Knight was a true sanctuary powerhouse, a powerful, godlike existence. Yet, he was killed by their president, Lin Lee. The problems that the Tower of Dusk was facing now were considered nothing at all compared to this. Dang, dang. Conoris walked up to Lin Lee, threw half of the Holy Light Cross Spear that he was holding onto the ground, and lamented in displeasure and disgruntlement. Look, this is the elaborate and luxurious product of your forging workshop, yet it's inferior to a fire stick. I don't care. Since you refused to give me Osric's weapon, you have to make me a decent weapon. When we go back, the Holy Light Cross was a magical weapon, 
that Linley had personally designed. Of course, it wouldn't be as weak and pathetic like Conoris described. It was just that they had faced the siege of twenty death knights this time, and the fact that the spear could last until the end was already rather impressive. In fact, Linley of course knew that Conoris was still coveting the spear that was used by the perfect body back then, which was a transformation of the debris of the stars, nothingness. However, Conor's strength and abilities were now considered the most important combat power of Linley's subordinates. Indeed, Conoris needed a better weapon to allow the power of the perfect body to be fully exerted. Of course, it was impossible for Linley to give nothingness to Conoris. He happened to recall the eternal frost blade that Rodhart had left behind after being purified, and thus said, The eternal frost blade is with me. Once I study it, you may use it. Conoris humped and remained silent, although the eternal frost blade could not be compared to the spear of nothingness. It was also considered a very powerful legendary weapon which was somewhat similar to nothingness in terms of space power. After packing everything up, Linley decided to leave because there was nothing worth wasting his time on in the underground palace. Linley led everyone out of the cave and arrived at the opening where Archbishop Inglos of the Brilliant Shrine was waiting for him. He knew that Linley had plenty of undead creatures and thus didn't bring any believers of the holy light with him. Archbishop Inglos, thank you very much for your help this time, said Linley who let his subordinates go first while he walked towards Inglos and expressed his sincere gratitude to him. Inglos smiled and said, I'm sure you know what happened to Rodhart. I can't say that it has nothing to do with the brilliant shrine. Besides, we were just praying outside the battlefield. Judging from the way you are now, the matter has probably been resolved. Eh, well, although things unexpectedly did not go according to plan, we still managed to resolve it smoothly with the help of you and your believers. Let's talk while walking. Lin Li was not modest at all. If it weren't for the Holy Light Magath array that Inglos and the believers of the Holy Light had put up, the result would have been completely different. The two of them slowly walked out, and Lin Li briefly told Inglos about the battle in the underground palace. Although it was all over, Lin Li couldn't help but shudder and feel a lingering sense of fear at the thought of Rodhart's menace. Inglos was also shocked after hearing it. At the same time, he also felt rather odd and emotional about Rodhart's death. After all, he was also a mythical character. When he was about to leave the Dragon Mountains, Linley invited Inglos to the Tower of Dusk as a guest to express his gratitude. However, Inglos was an archbishop of the Brilliant Shrine and had plenty of concerns, especially since there were many believers of the Holy Light who had come on this trip with him. In the end, he had no choice but to regretfully bid Linley goodbye. Watching Inglos leave, Linley reunited with his subordinates, and they set off together to make their way back to the Tower of Dusk. Although there was an unexpected occurrence during the operation this time, the outcome was fortunately good. After obtaining polar snow and raging flames, Lindley finally got hold of the seven pieces of the debris of the stars. Having them all might not be that different from having five in terms of the increase in combat power, since it just gave him two more options. However, the nomological power contained in each of the seven pieces of the debris of the stars encompassed all the world laws of Anril. For Linley, it was not just about having two extra options. The seven pieces of the debris of the stars contained the seven basic world laws, earth, fire, water, wind, light, darkness, and chaos, which constituted the world of Anril. Although it was not necessary for him to master all the laws to enter the sanctuary realm, the seven basic laws were extremely closely related. No one could truly and completely master a single law when there were no connections in between. Darkness had to be complemented by light, and vice versa. It was the same for the other laws. The high priest of the darkness shrine, Rog, mentioned that the two powers were interchangeable, and Pope Rosario's understanding of the laws of darkness was definitely not what most people could compare to. Hence, for Linley, it would be good to have a better comprehension and enlightenment of other laws, regardless of which law he wanted to master in order to enter the sanctuary realm. Not only would it speed up his pace of entering the sanctuary realm, he might even get to enter the sanctuary realm just by mastering all the laws. In addition to collecting the seven pieces of the debris of the stars, obtaining the ice and fire natural magic domain could be considered a gain that would significantly enhance the strength of the Tower of Dusk. Regardless of how great the Tower of Dusk developed and how much power they had, the Tower of Dusk in Duland was their root and foundation. As long as the Tower of Dusk stood strong in Duland, they would definitely be able to resolve all the problems they encountered, regardless of how difficult they might be. CHCK out LT Street VL on November Obin, CM. Hence, at the beginning of the establishment of the Tower of Dusk, Linley put in plenty of effort into developing it. He had been working hard to make the Tower of Dusk an indestructible fortress ever since then. He set up an all-kill array in the Tower of Dusk, 
installed powerful magical crystal cannons, and even fused the Eternal Furnace with the Tower of Dusk, even if the Tower of Dusk still couldn't compare to the Supreme Council's after Linless continuous strengthening and enhancements, it could be considered to be close to comparable. The only thing Lin Li found to be a pity was the fact that the Eternal Furnace, which was a piece of work that Osric was proud of, was not a finished product. The biggest problem was that he did not have an extremely powerful offensive weapon. Although Lin Li had purchased a large number of magical crystal cannons and installed them in the Eternal Furnace to make it seem like a hedgehog with spikes, they would just be ornaments for display if someone were to step on the Eternal Furnace regardless of how many there were. As for the two undead servants, as well as Conoris and Angelano, they might be powerful, but Linley could not guarantee that they would continue to stay at the Tower of Dusk forever. Hence, Linley placed the Black Front Fortress in the Eternal Furnace, allowing the Holy Death Knights to become a guarding force of the Tower of Dusk. However, that was not enough. Although the Death Knights were strong, they had yet to grow to the level of the Retribution Knight. Hence, if they were to face any real powerhouses, they would definitely be defeated easily. Obtaining the ice and fire natural magical domain could make up for the shortcomings of the Tower of Dusk to a large extent. The ice and fire natural magical domain was not a weapon and did not even have any attacking power. However, when combined with the Eternal Furnace, it would definitely bring about terrifying benefits. No matter how close the Archmages might be to the Legendary Realm, there would still be a world of a difference between them and legendary mages as long as they had yet to step into the legendary realm. One of the main reasons for the disparity in power was the enlightenment and application of the nomological power. Legendary mages could use nomological power to create their own magical domains and rely on their absolute control of the magical domains in order to become a godlike existence, which was something that archmages could not compare to. However, after combining the ice and fire natural magical domain with the eternal furnace, the archmages of the Tower of Dusk, would have their own magical domains. In other words, the Archmages would have their strength upgraded to the legendary level in one go with the help of the ice and fire natural magical domain. Of course, there was still a difference between that and the legendary mages, who really created a magical domain for themselves, though the difference wasn't huge. Not to mention, the Tower of Dusk still had the advantage of having more manpower. Lin Li had only brought along 40 Archmages with him, this time, and there were actually many more from the Tower of Dusk who had not been selected. How would a powerful enemy react when he broke through numerous obstacles and finally stepped onto the Eternal Furnace, only to find more than 40 legendary mages staring at him menacingly? That was a benefit that could be seen immediately, but that was not all that the Ice and Fire Natural Magical Domain could offer. As a solidified natural magical domain, the laws of the Ice and Fire Natural Magical Domain could be considered extremely perfect existences. For the Archmages who had begun to understand the laws and were ready to step into the legendary realm, it would be a perfect example. There were now plenty of Archmages above level 19 at the Tower of Dusk, and if they had the ice and fire natural magical domain to help them in gaining some enlightenment about the laws, Lin Li believed that it wouldn't take long for them to enter the legendary realm and become true legendary mages. Since the ice and fire natural magical domain could offer so many great benefits, Lin Li naturally didn't want to let it go to waste. Upon returning to the Tower of Dusk with his team, he immediately headed to the Eternal Furnace, on the top of the tower. In fact, the most difficult part about dealing with the ice and fire natural magical domain was taking out polar snow and raging flames, and also bringing the ice and fire natural magical domain out of the secret chamber of the underground palace. Lin Li had already managed to solve those two problems smoothly. The magical crystals of the ice and fire twin dragons also replaced polar snow and raging flames in being the core of the ice and fire natural magical domain. At the same time, the inclusive nature of the throne of darkness allowed the ice and fire natural magical domain to be devoured by it. What Lin Li had to do now was to place the throne of darkness and the ice and fire natural magical domain together on the eternal furnace. The only issue that he would have to consider was the cores of the ice and fire natural magical domain. If the two cores were directly exposed in the domain like polar snow and raging flames used to be, it would be too easy for the enemy to destroy the domain. Lin Li thought about it again and again and decided to place the magical crystals of the ice and fire twin dragons in the core of the eternal furnace where the giant crystal coffin was located. That was a forbidden zone, even for the mages of the Tower of Dusk. Even if the enemies bribed someone from the Tower of Dusk, they wouldn't be able to enter the forbidden area and wreak havoc. If someone were to really barge in, it wouldn't matter whether they damaged it. Standing in the square in front of the Eternal Furnace, Lin Li chanted a long spell with an indifferent expression. The door of the Eternal Furnace, 
which was originally red in color, gradually turned darker until it was completely covered by darkness. The throne of darkness then descended on the eternal furnace. The region where the Tower of Dusk was located seemed to have plunged into nighttime as the entire eternal furnace and Tower of Dusk were completely shrouded in darkness. However, that did not last long, as the eternal darkness was soon lit up like dawn, and the darkness faded as if it had been washed away by waves. Everything seemed to have been restored to its original state. However, Lin Li was the only one who knew that the throne of darkness did not really leave the eternal furnace and was simply existing in another form. That was also because Lin Li had understood some of the mysteries of the power of the sanctuary realm and had complete control over the throne of darkness. Otherwise, it would be impossible for him to achieve it. After the throne of darkness disappeared, the ice and fire natural magical domain gradually emerged, and white snowflakes began to float on the dark red eternal furnace. The snowflakes did not melt because of the high temperature of the eternal furnace, and instead landed on the ground and fell on the roof of the palace, giving the red building a silvery coat. The abnormality of the eternal furnace definitely sparked a plethora of speculations by those who were concerned about the Tower of Dusk but Lin Li wasn't concerned about it at all. After completing all the work, Lin Li left the Eternal Furnace and arrived at the Tower of Dusk, where he finally began to listen to reports from Gavin and other members who were in charge of various matters. Due to the fact that Lin Li did not restrict them from disclosing any details, the 40 Archmages had already spread the word about their expedition this time, thus allowing the other mages to find out the ins and outs of it. The various problems encountered by the Tower of Dusk recently had caused some of them to get riled up, but after hearing the insider story of the expedition, the feeling of uneasiness in their hearts immediately disappeared without a trace. Rodhart flew into a rage in the breezy plains, and even if it happened hundreds of years ago, it still wasn't considered that long. To a resident of the breezy plains, the disaster that struck back then was not just a story. The Death Knights slaughtered hundreds of thousands of people, some of whom were the ancestors of some people. Hence, they were much more emotional and horrified by the terrifying retribution knight Rodhart and the Death Knights than people in other regions. Their president Lin Li actually managed to kill the demon-like retribution knight, who was a real sanctuary powerhouse in a true terrifying existence. Since he could do that, he would definitely be able to solve the problems of the Tower of Dusk which now seemed insignificant in comparison, no matter how strong they might be who in the breezy plains could rival the terrifying retribution knight. Mages were known to be atheists. However, they seemed to reveal a kind of pious faith in their eyes when looking at Lin Li. The Tower of Dusk today was far stronger than it used to be two or three years ago. Although the two main businesses of the Tower of Dusk, pharmaceutics and forging, were not spread throughout Anril, they at least occupied a certain amount in the market in the human kingdoms of Felon and Ledin. Given how much the Tower of Dusk had developed, it would naturally be impossible for Gavin and Beckley to be the only ones managing it. Hence, apart from Gavin and Beckley, there were other mages who were leaders of respective areas, sitting in the conference hall at the moment. One of them was Alan, who had just stepped into the legendary realm. He was currently a senior executive of the Tower of Dusk. President, we have yet to find out the whereabouts of Cassano, but the potion formula and forging blueprints that he has stolen have all been used to create a large number of completed products that have appeared on the market recently. They're all sold at prices that are a fifth of our prices. No matter who produced them, they definitely make a loss. It's obvious that they're going against us, Gavin said with a sullen expression. Although the management of the Tower of Dusk had been expanded, Gavin was still the chief supervisor, who oversaw all aspects of the Tower of Dusk. Hence, although there were other people who were responsible for the assessment of members, Gavin was still responsible for overlooking a traitor like Cassano, who had stolen the secrets of the Tower of Dusk. However, Lindley did not intend to hold him accountable now, and simply waved his hands. He said, Let's talk about Cassano's issue. I do have some impression of him. He's talented and rather hardworking. Cassano is from Roland, and he's also known as a genius amongst the locals. He joined the Tower of Dusk two years ago, and is very talented in learning magic. He's also a very humble and modest person. Due to the fact that his abilities and strength increased rapidly, and he was also very enthusiastic in completing the tasks of the guild, his contribution rate had also increased rapidly. He had also gained some considerable authority. Due to the fact that Gavin had been investigating Cassano lately, he revealed almost everything about Cassano without thinking at all when Lin Li asked the question. President, I think that Cassano's betrayal is not an accident. This incident has exposed a flaw in our contribution system, which seems to be fair on the surface. Although individual strength and competency are important, the greater an immoral person's abilities, the greater the damage he will cause said a middle-aged mage named Seth. Although he had only joined the Tower of Dusk for over a year, he had strong management abilities, 
which allowed him to soon become a member of the management committee of the Tower of Dusk. Seth's words seemed to have made sense, but Linley could obviously tell that he was trying to question and challenge Gavin's position. After all, the contribution system of the Tower of Dusk was established by Gavin. However, Linley didn't care about this. Power struggle within a force was normal, and it would be impossible to eradicate it. Without competition, there would be no development. If everyone in the Tower of Dusk had no desires, what development would there be for the Tower of Dusk? Of course, Lin Li would not allow unscrupulous methods to be used to vie for power in the Tower of Dusk. We can't see or touch a person's morals and ethics. How can that be used as a criterion? Before Kasano's betrayal, did anyone suspect there to be an issue with his character? Even now, we still have plenty of mages who don't believe that Kasano would betray us, Beckley retorted. As a veteran of the Tower of Dusk, Beckley was naturally more biased towards Gavin. Thank you for watching Mystic Realms Recap. Please like share and subscribe. Have a great day.